It's Collider Live, and it is Monday. Yes, it's called Collider Live because we are live. That's what we do. We broadcast on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning from 10 to 12 here in California talking about God knows what and who knows what. And yeah, you might hear about movies, you might not. So stop complaining about it, you silly sons of bitches, and let's have some fun. <laughs> it is a fun crew here today. I'm excited to talk to the crew. And the first person who is making her debut on Schmodown Live, co-holder of the Schmodown Team Championship, Classy Clark Wolf. Hello, Clark Wolf. Hello, sir. You just had a Freudian slip. You said Schmodown Live. Did I say Schmodown Live? <laughs> you sure did. I'm so used to it because of what just happened. I said Schmodown Live, Collider yeah. Live. It's the Schmodown Live. Uh, wow. Well, yes, it's Collider Live. And also back... Hello, Roxy Stryer. How are you? With a vengeance. Yeah. Woo! It's nice to see you. You brought, you, you brought a friend with you. I did. It's nice to have him here. He's over with me at SJ all the time. I figured I could just drag him along yeah, He's for not a saying show. anything. No. He's posing, though. It's kind of awkward. JT, how are you? Always breathing down my neck. He's not saying anything. Uh, nothing. Okay. There's okay. nothing it's, to say. It's good to have oh. you. And Mark Yodi Riley, producer of Clarity Live. Happy to be here, Christian. Good to Hello see you. Hello, everyone. How are you feeling? I'm feeling much better. Thank you. How are your tweets? Yeah, my tweets were fantastic. Listen. <laughs> Wait, what? We what did I miss? Uh, I, had the, got, I had the flu. He's got an issue with me. Aww. I had the flu. And uh, what happens is usually when I get sick is that automatically default, I have the shits. And so everybody tweets at oh, me, yeah. like, hey, how are those shits, Riley? <laughs> and I'm dying in my bed with 102 temperature. And I'm like, I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I get these fuckers doing the, like, has the shits. And people are tagging me on Twitter. Here are the shits. Did Cody put the, yes. Cody put the fun fact? Yes. How did everybody know that you get the shits when you're sick? You uh, said that? You know what? Didn't have the shits. Oh. I was sick. I, I was sh- sick. I should I was, have listened the to the flu. show before I came on it, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, welcome to Collider Live, yeah. Clark. Yeah, yeah. Clark, Clark yeah. Partner. She's too Sorry. classy for us. Yeah, well, Clark, yeah. The, the first thing, Clark was like, uh, so we're going to talk about Jordan Peele. Like, we'll get there. No, no, um, we are. We're going to get there. And not... We'll get there. But, um, yes, but we're, first. But first, the, the important, the important news, yeah. stuff. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking really, news. Let's get to the... He didn't have the shit. Yeah. yeah. It's a breaking story, and we figured out. Although, I don't know... We're going to clip this out later. Well, I'm sure that the fun fact said that Riley still has the shits. Riley? Um, did not have the shits. Oh, fun good. fact. Thank okay. you very much right. for clearing that up. Speaking of the facts. boys behind the uh, the mics over there too, making all the fart noises, Beardo and <laughs> Copster and Cody, how are you guys? Hey. Turns my mic on. Doing we're doing good. good yeah, man. did you have a good weekend? Woo! Yeah, Schmodown live. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that do too. Do it live. We do it. We did it live. And man, I'm fucking live. Whoa, whoa. All right, sorry. 400, 400 people all collectively together. It was great. Um, and both Josh McCougar is going to be in here in the second half of the hour to talk about that, as well as Frank Janish, co-host of the Schmodown Rundown, is here. And we're going to talk about the stuff that happened because it was it was humbling, it was cool, and you were missed. I, w- I w- really wanted to be there. Uh, but, you know, as I'm sure most people at this table would agree, sometimes you got to do you. I understand. And, and I, had, I had family or friends in town from Texas, and they decided to go to Huntington beach for the weekend and got me a hotel room so yeah. i went on a little vacay for the weekend you did you i, I went had to the to beach yeah i went to the beach yesterday also and it was nice to just kick back and relax and I it's can't so much picture you at a beach really yeah oh, I, there's I something beach, about it i was a beach rat for a long time really it's you t- right now do you lay out I, usually right now i'm pale as powder so it's like and a, that powder reference still works even though it's like years later yeah. it still works well powder lowercase or uppercase perfect <laughs> perfect that's not there the picture from yesterday um but <laughs> Hilarious. I did love, I do love the Do you beach. drink at the beach? Like, what do you do there? I'm just trying to picture Get in my Get hammered head. with my two kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah did you true. have like a Corona at the beach? Not yesterday. No, I just, I ate a, I ate a sandwich on the beach and I was the happiest. I looked, I just looked like, like a whale eating just in the middle of the, just get away from me. I'll rip your arm out if you come near my sandwich. And it was great because my daughter now is, is almost seven. So she used to be horrendous at the beach. She would just run into the water. Now she's seven. She understands not to go too far in, so I could just she can go do her thing. The little one just, you know, slamming strawberries in her face, and it's and it's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Just, just sit back, relax. But um, it's it's I look like uh, it's it's too white. It's ridiculous. No, that's not why though. I why? just because you you're always doing something. Mm-hmm. Like the beach is for people who aren't. Doing something. I was oh. eating a sandwich. I was eating a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, that's a good Do you understand that? If, oh, it, sorry. It, thank you. Uh, in my ideal world, I would do nothing. If I had enough All money, day. if I had enough money to do nothing, I would do nothing. Can I say that um, last year I had surgery on my vocal cords, and so I was I was out of I couldn't work or talk for three weeks. I mean, I and that's that. like no exaggeration. I was not allowed to speak, and um, 
I had just moved, so I was kind of unpacking my apartment, decorating, like buying things, running errands, and it was shocking to me how fast I turned into housewife. Like I was like, yeah, this is great. If it was my job to just stay at home and do the house, and I'm like you guys, yeah. like I'm always running around and doing something, but it was scary how fast I was like country club lady. You yeah. say that right now, but the one thing I will say, it changes a lot if there's two little people running around. I am can only imagine. Yes, because like someone, I can't remember, my wife and I were talking about this, and I know it was Riley, I think. Uh, I was talking with my wife about it. It was Riley had said something to me along the lines of, um, I was talking about my kids, and I was like, man, you don't understand. I was like, no, I get it. I was like, no, you don't. You don't. There was like, no. a, like I was talking to someone who does have children. You understand. You get it. It's like there. It is just a different, different thing. Well, I can I completely get it. You, 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 I was talking to some guy at the live event because Ellis was tired. Ellis is a champion. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what Ellis did for this live Tiff, event? Right. He was in yeah. Toronto because he had already committed. He had committed to the fans that he was going to be there at the live event. And you know the fans came for the meet and greet, and and there was like there's different tiers that you can get to be there. So. Ellis flew from Toronto to be there because he, he had gotten booked to that afterwards. Mm -hmm. So flew there and then flew back the same night. It's so, don't yeah. forget about that it's time crazy. change, friends, because that's a different that's a different time zone for him. To, that's that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, he was completely wrecked. Um, and then I was talking to some guy afterwards, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty exhausted." He's like, "Not as tired as him." I'm like, "We're probably in the same level right now," um, because like I, you, this, when you have a kid that sleeps. Every two hours, it's like, mm. look, I love you, kid, but cut the shit, <laughs> and and that's where we're at. And and then they got these fucking squirrels running around still, still. You have these squirrels. It's the never-ending struggle. You have squirrels. Can I just bring Cal them? over to your house? What do you say? They have these them. squirrels. Who's they? Me. I have these squirrels the that fuck with me. You, fuck. You, you know what? Nature can go suck an egg <laughs> because it's like they put these squirrels. You have squirrels that run around like we're we're in California, and I got raccoons and squirrels. It's and, nature. You live in nature. Yeah. Don't look. Yeah. Squirrel? That, that's a cute one. Squirrel? But they're pricks. They're real pricks. <laughs> I gotta tell you, because they mess with you. It's like my, my daughter now is has like this, yeah. My daughter has like this this uh sprayer that she sprays them to get them out of the trees. Because they eat the, my daughter and my, my wife will, will plant like these flowers and and, they, and these little pricks come in and they start eating it. They wrecked my nice chair that I got for my birthday a couple of years ago. And it really is one of these things, and they look at you like that, like, yeah, come on, fuck face, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and I and I can try to toss water at them and do everything too, and they come right back. I you got toss Rufus. water? Yeah. I throw water at them. That's, that's really harsh. This is a poor little squirrel. What do you want me to do? You want me to hit him You're with a rock? You're in the squirrel's place. It's not like a no, spider. No, they're in mine. It's not like a spider. It's not like it's in your house, right? It's in my You're courtyard. You're in its house. You know why? I found out the reason why they're doing it. Why? Because this fucking lady next door. <laughs> She's putting peanut butter out? She takes peanuts uh -huh. and she lines them all the way around. And they go, and it's a field day. It's like, hey, you greedy. Okay, that's psycho. It's like, She's hey. feeding squirrels? It's like, hey, you greedy little pricks. You get all these peanuts, and yet you come in to eat my plants in my chair. That's psycho. So you're getting water to the balls. You know what you should do? You should show her there's like a, a Twitch channel where you can watch squirrels, squirrels? all day, every Who does day. This? I have no idea, but I, that I, is the most popular Twitch channel. It, it does unbelievably well, Gary, like yes. millions and millions. Uh, but you should set that up for her. Maybe she's old enough, she won't notice. I think she's like. 80 or something so I'm going to no, tell her so all yet, these then. squirrels now know that they can yeah. go and get these peanuts right. exactly what am I going to say to the hey you old bat stop yeah. leaving up peanuts I'm not going to do that it's mean anyway um, JT any uh, comments on the, the peanuts I just want JT to make a squirrel Tricer movie to direct stops. Stops. anything Tricer Tricer stops. there it is thank you we're, thank you there's a lot that we're going to be talking about today obviously besides squirrels and raccoons um, we are going to be talking there's a lot of shit that went down I don't know did you put, watch the Emmys I'm sure you did mm. you didn't Wow, I would assume that you would do that. Why didn't you do that? Did you watch the Emmys? I didn't know. You don't have to. Why you didn't have to? The the daytime Emmys. You're talking about the daytime. Um, the creative Emmys. Creative Emmys. But I don't yeah. think they were. They're really, not televised. They're not televised. Well, then yeah. nobody watched it. What the fuck do I know? I, yeah, just I, don't saw, know. I was wondering. Do you have a screener? Or you guys are giving me like a whole bunch no, of shit. I, I, All you have to say is, listen, I don't think it aired. We were giving you shit. We were looking confused. You're not far off though. I'm pretty sure that they were. There were some like YouTube clips of it, so I could have done my job a little better. I saw some stuff on Twitter. Yeah, I think it was like the technical awards. I saw the stuff that everyone works the hardest for, but they don't get the credit. 
Yeah. So, exactly. Yes. Uh, there it is. All right. No, All right. I didn't know. Well, obviously you didn't But watch what it. if I had said yes? Because sometimes <laughs> I think about lying about shit so I don't look stupid. Right. Well, then uh, it's a good time. That's your, good. Brain, your brain tells you when to lie. I mean, sh- shows you're a good liar. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Yes, I did. I Weren't they amazing? It, and it was amazing. And man, <laughs> Carrot Top crushed it. Crushed. <laughs> He's um, really coming back strong. Yeah, I don't know. But there was a lot of stuff I saw yesterday that, I mean, I just saw a bunch of pictures. I saw yeah. stuff that Adam Gertler, I guess he interviewed a whole oh, yeah, bunch I saw of people. That I saw too. that stuff. I saw, you know, Dan Merle had, had said that they had lost to, because uh, you know, they were nominated to this Queer year. Eye, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'd, I, I'd lose to Queer Eye. So yeah. I thought that was all going down. I don't know. But I did watch episode um, four of the Ozark. You're so fucking behind, Christian. How many kids do you have? I have all of the kids. You have all the Wait, kids. Wait, episode four of the first season? <laughs> second no, it's season. Second. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're, you're I get up it. There. I Come get on. it. But you're so. We're I about need, there too. Yeah. I need you to speed up. I'm getting there. Listen. I finished it, and I'm supposed to be able to talk to you about it. it I would have whacked out two of them. Night. I would have gotten two, but I started watching that Jim Carrey show. Last Kidding. Night. Ooh, is it good? Is it okay? I love it. Michael Gondry. Yeah, I know. Michelle Gondry. Sure. Take it easy. Yeah. He um, he doesn't. He looks very interesting on that billboard on uh, Highland or wherever that is. Have you seen? Yeah. Did you? Do you have you seen the trailers for this? Thing? Yeah. Yeah. I know what the show is. Um. But I have not, not watched it yet. But I am curious. And I was reading that the season itself is pretty good. But okay. maybe I don't know. I I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. It might be. It just didn't. It didn't get my my interest. I wanted it. I guess I'm always looking for Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind again. You Me know? too. Yeah. I know. It was a special. That was like a. I isolated incident. I know. And I it's because Michelle Gondry hasn't done it since, and I'm hoping that he would. And he directed it last night. It wasn't bad. It's just like I didn't really like Jim Carrey's character. It was like a, you can tell his inspiration from Mr. Rogers. Sure. What's it, it about? So he's this Mr. Rogers type character. And oh, he's... see, this is how you know a show is not good when you had to take a deep breath to explain what it was. You did not want to tell me what the show is. Because about. I'm not there yet. I'm not just not there yet. I could probably try to watch a couple more episodes. I don't like to bail on the first one because there's yeah. always that. I agree. Yeah, it's like the Seinfeld thing. The Seinfeld the people would have bailed on the first one. Then Parks and Rec. Right. Gosh. So Ew. like the. He's a Mr. Rogers type character. He's he suffered this loss. Um, he's got a his one of his kids is kind of a douchey little uh, almost teenager. He's got a going through a divorce, and and honestly, that's about as far as I got. I was about 15 minutes in, and then my wife was like, "Yeah, eh, we tried it. Let's, let's go back to Ozark," and we finished watching. Ozark. What happened to two episodes? I'm gonna watch it, but I'm just. So you said you watched two episodes. No, I said I watched uh, one episode. Oh, you would have banged out two episodes of Ozark, but instead you watched 15 Correct. minutes of this. Correct. Correct. Got it. Got it. So, now I'm with you. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what my my night was last night. That's a bummer because Ozark is just unreal. I'm you, digging it. Yeah, you should. Uh, you try this one yet? Yeah, you know, I actually I actually stopped watching Ozark really? um, after the pilot did nothing for me, and I similarly also like to give something multiple episodes, but I, I kept waiting for like the spin. On the you know clean cut white guy who gets caught up in a mess and yeah. and and it didn't happen by the end of the pilot. It really seemed like oh this is just exactly what it is on its face. Am I wrong? No, I think that if you didn't like the pilot, you won't like the show. I think that uh, that's what I had heard too, yeah. and so I was kind of like yeah, I'm all set on I'm this. Shocked one. too because the first episode for me was batshit. I, I yeah. felt crazy. nothing. Yeah, too. Really? Felt yeah. yeah. If you don't the like second that, episode, then I kind of I fell off for a while, and then second season came back around. And everybody's talking about it. We binged finished yeah. the first season. Now I'm in. I do think I'm there's a in. change though. I do. I think that you know you the tone is similar throughout the whole series, but I think there are changes in arcs for sure too. And and I think Makuga pitched it. The best before I ever watched the first episode, and that's that it's essentially Breaking Bad, but the whole family's in on it. You yeah, know? yeah, and to me, that's not. Eh. Yeah, okay. I'm all set. I'm okay. You know what I started watching that uh, as Miss slash Mrs. TV. I don't know if I'm married to TV or I'm just like mm-hmm. all, all about it. And it's my last name. Uh, I started watching for the first time True Detective. Oh, I can't believe gosh. I've made season it this one? far. Season oh, one. Great. I'm not. I'm not in. No. I'm mm. four, on season one. I'm four episodes wow. in, and I'm like, wow. I, I'm gonna finish it because everybody talks about it being one of the best seasons of TV of all time. But I don't get it. Just Ooh. wait to get the tracking shot. Wait till you get the tracking shot. I think she did the tracking shot. Oh, you hit the tracking shot. I hit the tracking shot. It's a great shot. Wow. That's about that, though. It's fine. I just watch so much TV that like. I can't believe that this wow. is what people are appreciating. Well, and here's the other thing, too, is like not to say that it was that long ago, but it was several years ago, and it was sort of on the cusp. Of, not on the cusp, because obviously The Sopranos was early 2000s and, and Breaking Bad uh, was before. But, I, you know, it's hard to, like, go back 
when we have so much amazing TV right now, and it, and it wasn't even that long ago, and I think that speaks to like how good TV is yeah. right yeah, now. It's good. It's totally solid. I don't mean anything other than that, but I was expecting this to be the best show. This of was all also pre McConaughey, not pre McConaughey, but I don't right the, had he. Right in the middle it was of it. right in the middle yeah. of like Matthew McConaughey winning his Oscar. It was and, part of it. Is exactly. what started. Yeah, 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 right, right. He's yeah. good. You, I want to sock both of them in the face. Like yeah. Woody Harrelson's character is the biggest dickhead, and like. Yeah. God, relationships like this kill me. Yeah. I'm very it's, invested now, actually. I well, guess. season two. <laughs> hey, so you do I, like it. All of a sudden, I feel very emotionally attached. Well, I have good news for you. Season two, you can skip. Yeah. So That's what I hear. Just get through. Two yeah. stinks. Just Pretty get much, through yeah. these couple of episodes and then watch funny clips of season two y- on YouTube. Okay. Are there funny clips? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, when yes. Vince Vaughn says with a complete straight face, it's like blue balls, but for your heart. Yeah. I will never <laughs> in my can life. Find that? Find Forget. That. He says this with a straight face. What does it Nick, mean? It, it, exactly. What does it mean? Nick Pizzolatto wrote this heart. like he thought it was serious. Yeah. And oh, it's not a joke. He's saying this it. is completely serious. He thinks this is good writing. And right. and Vince Vaughn agreed to deliver this line. So here you go. True Detective Frank Seymour's crazy. Is that like post. when it's not happening for you? So your your heart's like hanging on? I, and, I don't know. Uh, but just I don't no. remember. It I, was I, yeah, I bailed insane. on that. I don't, I don't know which clip I, it is here. It's fine. Yeah. I, watched the, I watched the whole season and I just... I thought he was miscast, uh, Vince Vaughn, in, the, in that role. And the, the thing, I thought Colin Farrell was great. He, th- listen, there were elements. Mm-hmm. The actors were not. And again, actually, I'm not faulting Vince Vaughn for the delivery of that line. I'm faulting him for agreeing to say right. it. He yeah. should have been like, dude, I love you, bro, but this is no, we need right. to change this line. Right. But um, so it's not I his I don't know. Fault. When you're in that deep, though, sometimes you're tired, you're doing your job. like, And then when you have that perspective, maybe you're like, okay, that line was crap. But I don't know if you can fault Vince Vaughn for that. Yeah. Blue, well, I fault Nick Pizzolatto. Yeah. But but for on sure. top of that, I feel like if you read Blue Balls for Your Heart and it's not a joke, you just need to say. Right. I, he probably wrote me. it for Vince Vaughn because he thought Vince Vaughn could probably pull it off. But in, who knows? I think, well, Nick Pizzolatto has sort of a reputation of being a... Pizzolatto. Oh. <laughs> oh, Nailed really? It. Nailed it. Oh, yeah. I mean, in, in season two, do you remember how they have the crazy Hollywood director that is clearly Carrie Fukunaga, and he wrote a whole subplot in trolling Carrie Fukunaga? Oh, really? No, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, well, it's like, hey, spoiler alert, season two sucks, and yeah. what's the thing that's missing? Oh, Carrie Fukunaga. Who made that's that? That's right. He, he absolutely made season one incredible. I agree with you. I, I just... Eh. Season three is coming out soon. That, right? yeah, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm binging. Yeah. Well, it what? is anthology. Yeah. So I, I know. I just kind of didn't want to be that person who got on the bandwagon and was like, I never saw anything but Mahershala Ali. Like, right. When does it come out? January. Oh, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I'm 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 gonna give it a shot. Is, is Fukunaga doing it? No. Uh, who's doing it? Um, I don't know. Well, Solanye, Jeremy Solanye. Yeah, let's Google this one because um he did Green Room. He was originally supposed to direct the whole season, and then due to creative differences, he left. Uh-oh. So. I That's don't bad. know. Yeah, but I do think this might be a situation of um, maybe an indie director who's gotten a lot of acclaim yeah. um, doing things his way, uh-huh. kind of coming into something that's really like studio driven there and, and, right. and maybe just well, not. It's kind of like Edward Wright stuff. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Which, uh, nothing wrong with that. I'm actually really excited to see Jeremy Saulnier's new movie at um, Fantastic. D- directed Fest. by Jeremy Saulnier. That's who so, you're talking about. So, right? Yeah, so I guess. So he, First two he's directing. Okay. Yeah. okay, so then he left He left in the middle of the season. Which is that bodes well. What'd you say, Cops? Green Room is amazing. I yes. like Green Room. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, okay, before we're going to get to some movie news in a little bit, but first thing I wanted to talk about, there was, uh, we, we always talk right before we go on air and I always try to tell everybody not to I'm so good at that you're terrible at it but Mm -hmm. it actually does it's good that we talk about it a little bit because then we go oh we should talk about that on the air and there's two things I actually want to get to the first thing is with Clark yeah Um, so I was not I think a lot of people were not shocked but like oh cool where did that come out of left field you're doing a new show yeah the left field thing wasn't that because it's it's DC right that to me wasn't left field that I saw you I was when I saw Sam Levine on there, yeah, not because it's Sam Levine, the actor of Freaks and Geeks, or anything, 
what the hell does he know about comic book movies? He he has a lot of really fun stories about comics and growing up. Mm. Like you know, because because DC Daily is is movies, TV, and comics, and so Sam absolutely has a history. Um, and and I'm sure you'll see it on the show um, with with certain arcs that were like really like he tells a story about his brother really like introducing him to to one specific storyline. I forget which one in particular it was, but. Um, but yeah, so so he he actually does, and that's what's cool to me yeah. about the cast that they've assembled is, of course, Tiffany Smith there is there, of course, Hector Navarro, of course, Whitney Moore. But then you have people like the the DC. Um, oh, so Whitney is involved because mm-hmm. she wasn't announced. She was um, not at the live stream, and neither was Marquia. They were at Burning Man. Oh, yeah. So, nice. Marquia, so the host of DC Movie News. So yes. for people who don't know about the announcement itself, what so what is it? What because it, it was DC All Access, right? Is that still yes. is that still the thing or no? It's evolved into this. It's evolved. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to speak out of turn, okay. but basically the the series is um, yeah. So so our show is called DC Daily, and um, DC Universe is the bigger the bigger uh, platform, mm-hmm. right? And I think it's seven ninety nine a month. Oh okay. And it is. I mean, it's it's twenty five hundred comic books. It's the movies, whether oh, it's... Oh, you get comics when you oh, sign yeah. up. Oh, that's great. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, it's, like, pretty recent, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. They go pretty new. And okay. this is just a start, because I think they're they're always... In, they're interested in expanding the platform in a lot of different ways. And you'll be interviewing guests. Well, and... it's... Yeah, it's like certain roundtables. Um, well, John Behrman's already on the show, uh, yeah, so that's exactly. having a guest every week, yes, pretty much. Yes, pretty much, yeah. And um, so, so there... But you can, you can re-watch... Uh, they remastered the Linda Carter Wonder Woman. Um, they remastered Batman the Animated Series. Series, so now you can actually watch it in HD. Oh, I see. Um, it's it's all that kind. Of, Lois and Clark is on there, and then of course you have um, you know new shows, a new Greg Berlanti show. You have new animated shows. You have the Swamp Thing show that is exclusive to mm-hmm. that. And Doom then, Patrol. Yes, yeah. exactly. So what will you be doing? Is it everybody is, is like everyone's an analyst, and everybody just kind of breaks down like a team, of like say like ESPN, or is no, it more something? I think it's more fan based, like okay. truly like to us as fans, sort of unpacking maybe a classic run in a certain comic and so the idea is that yes this is going to be material that hardcore fans will love but also like you know fans who are just new to the the idea of this whole big universe maybe you haven't read flashpoint maybe you haven't you know you haven't read mad love or the killing joke or whatever like in theory we have one book or one arc and we can like all sit down and react to it and talk about it and provide a little context or we can be talking about you know a new Aquaman and and stuff and so in everything, everything. In so if you're a DC fan the show's for you and also maybe if you want to get into it if you want to learn about yeah. the movies learn about the comics this is the show for you it's so cool what yeah. are you most excited to talk about well I am so I'm you know obviously James Wan is my my, my man is and he going to come in and talk to you guys? I hope so yeah. that would be amazing yeah. I feel but, like he has to he will I mean, it'd be re- it'd be really cool if we did, uh, but uh, but I'm really excited for the new live action Swamp Thing that James is producing, oh, cool. and that's exclusive to the service. That's oh. exclusive to the platform. Swamp DC Thing, Universe. you can only yeah. get the Swamp Thing li- live thing. Yeah. With, oh, that's cool. And, it, so, and they're leaning into I the see. horror so of it. This and is their Netflix. They have yes. six I original see. series that they're launching yes. with that are exclusive to so that. So you know what it is, and this is it's a good thing that they're doing this for sure. I just uh, there's so much of it now because the way that streaming has just yeah. changed the game in general. The Disney service. Service, mm-hmm. the DC service, Netflix, Amazon. Nickelodeon which is has one, I think. Coming. All of it. Listen, I think it's a it, it, WWE. They, everybody, yeah. it's 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 the new way to go. I'm I'm convinced. My wife is. I love her to death. Is such an old fogey in so many ways. Doesn't think any movies are, are good outside of the 80s, right? Still has an, a regular iPod that is plays for my... She for, has an, an iPod? It plays for my daughter still. She does, refuses. She, if, I get her, if I get her, a, a, you know, a Hey Google or any of those things or, or, or Alexa, she wants nothing to do with it, right? Um, and I'm trying to get to get rid of DirecTV. I mean, we don't need this shit anymore. We got, like, I like to watch the weather. I want to watch... You can watch it on a streaming. You don't need yeah. this shit. Yeah, I watch the weather. That's the real The reason. weather, the news. Um, and I, I cut cable. The, it is I it cut amazing. It I don't need it. I don't I need it. I watch more TV than anybody it. I know, and I, want, yeah. I cut cable. I got a Roku, and I have all the passwords. I have everything. Yes. I don't yes. need it. But yeah. she doesn't. She wants to. It's a waste of money, but we do it every, every week. Anyway, the point is, DC is another service that is essentially like just adding a channel. Yeah. It's like, so that is something that is very exciting. Um, yeah. So one of the things I'm curious about, too, because... You've obviously made a big name for yourself in this space uh, as, come on, 
uh, Hector Navarro, yeah. Tiffany Smith. You guys, I mean, you're players in the in this game that we're in. And so, what is it like? Do you just you get a call from the manager, or the agent? They go, hey, we're, we're, they're looking for people at DC. You go in there. Do you know somebody? What's, well, how's that work? Actually, I auditioned for this in April. Oh wow! It was actually the Long day, process. yeah, the day before I started working at Fandom, and um, oh wild, yeah, and um, and then when I got let go, um, that was the like one of the first emails I sent yeah. was sort of following up and being like, hey, so you know I have been working for this brand for a long time, but now um, they've made changes in their video department and they've let go a lot of people, and so I'm available. <laughs> I'm sure you're already staffed up, but if you're not, I would really love to be considered and then very 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 quickly it came together so two questions is something you just said there that's awesome Clark. Yeah. thank you yeah, You're congratulations welcome. two things you said inside of that the first is yeah. fandom yep um, can you talk at all about so what happened there? So yeah. I know you were you were working there, everything was cool, and then layoffs just happened. Yeah, I mean, I think that when you are, um, I, I think that there just was different strategy. You know, I think they have an interim CEO right now, and um, if you assemble a team and you don't necessarily have like the mandate. Right. You don't know what you know, we were we were trying things and we were trying to expand the brand and all that. But I think they at the end of the day just decided to take th take a step back and go, right. OK, what is our brand and what kind of content do we want to create? And also, if we have all of the staff like right. on 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 payroll when we don't really know what we want to do. And they just bought screen junkies. Exactly. Right, right, right. Yeah. So so I think it just was a business. It was truly just a business decision. Yeah. And um, No hard feelings. It is, it's business. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was really fucking awesome the way that you guys all handled it, though, because a lot of times when something like this happens, I feel like people take to Twitter. Uh, we've seen it in the digital space tons yeah. of times. That's uh, the worst no, part of Twitter. No people take to Twitter. I have, sorry to hold that for no, a second because that the reason you, you when you bring that up, I have a lot of personal relationships with people, and other people have relationships with people on Twitter, and not on Twitter in general, and they say things on Twitter, and it's like call someone. Call someone. Right. Call someone and say, hey, here's something I was wanted to ask you about or talk to you about this. Blasting people on Twitter does not help you in this business if At you're all. trying to do yep. things. Yeah. I, mean, I just think that, like, I, I remember I tweeted, I messaged you mm -hmm. because you tweeted something so beautiful that was just like, thank you so much for allowing me to do this. Wish everybody the best. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to say, but nobody does it because everybody is bitter and I'm not saying you have reason to be but everybody gets like feels like it's a, a breakup of like a scorned lover yeah. or something and uh, I thought that was really cool and I, I looked at so many people from fandom who all said very similar things and I was like that's a great network. It was such a good group like truly yeah. from the editorial side through the video side I mean every and social media I mean everybody was really hard working and did did a great job and loved their jobs and um, it was abrupt like we were definitely not really expecting it um, but you know again it's the business and yeah. the digital space changes it's, it's so it's hard fickle. yeah it's so but thank you yeah yes. I appreciate awesome. that and my second question is I've been asking you to do this and I don't think you've listened to me once when I've asked you to <laughs> when are you gonna start working on your Sarah Silverman impression oh my god because if you watch Clark <laughs> watch she has uh, certain, the second you said that I was like oh, oh. she they move their face the same way yeah. like that and they have similar voices Please work on that because oh I gosh. guarantee you would nail it. I would love I to be. But you're you're an actress. I feel like that. I know impersonations, baby. I mean, hey, I would I I want to be like I'd like to be her stunt double or like her her like uh, stand in, stand -in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait, who's the other person that you said Clark looks identical to the, the bachelor, other day? The Bachelorette. Oh, the Bachelorette. Yeah, that yeah. was Josh McCuga told me he that. He told that me he and his wife were like. That looks like Clark. Yeah, he told me. So work on and, both of us. Yeah, because he had, well, I, the voice, I don't know if she can get, then they just have a similar look. Mm. But Sarah Silverman, when, when I talk, every time I talk to her, I'm like, oh man, yes, it's there. Anyway, so working <laughs> up for Halloween. Okay, um, yeah. Um, and then you, you, you thought were you, you were going to hate everybody in Vegas. Yeah, I you did. You thought you weren't going to talk to anybody. You went to the Queen, uh, the Bohemian Rhapsody junket. Yeah, it was First of all, how wild. was the concert? Uh, it was wild. Yeah. We were, I couldn't believe it. They, they like really pulled out all the stops. Um, you know how a lot of times when you go to junkets, you re very quickly realize, like, ooh, I am not famous. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to famous people, and I am dirt. Like, that is very what, much so the way. Hard on yourself? They don't uh, treat us very They don't treat you very well yeah, at a junket. Yeah, they, you just, and I don't mean, it's no, it's no company in particular. It's just like when you go to talk to these huge celebrities, they don't get, not the celebrities, the companies don't give an F about you. Like, You're just a dime a dozen. 100%. Yeah. And guess what? 
We kind of are a dime a dozen. There's so many people who do our job. You can't really blame them. I think Scott Mass does not allow anyone to do that, though. Yes, you. I'm coming in to interview you. And yeah. they're like, so all right, true. there it is. It's Mass. He's like a hurricane. That's so again, true. There are those people that just yeah. have it. Uh, then, then I guess there's the me's yeah. of the world. There he is. So, there he is. So it was kind of interesting because they flew us on that private jet with the cast. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. But obviously they were like, um, but the first three rows are reserved for them. So you guys right. can get you just the stare at them like, the yeah, right. You just stare uh, at them. Yeah. We don't do, talk to them. So they had us don't do try this, to give them peanuts like the squirrels. They actually had us do this really weird thing that I was somewhat uncomfortable with. Uh-oh. Uh, when we got there, they wanted to recreate a shot. Um, I, I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but it's like an iconic band shot. And so they had us mob the actors as oh fans like as groupies? fans Whoa. and like jump and yell or something <gasps> that's um weird. And, that's really and weird. i felt really uncomfortable i'm not even gonna lie i, I was wish like, there was a camera on you for that God. i was uh, and i don't if somebody's mad at me for saying that i'm sorry I, not everybody there felt uncomfortable but yeah. like i was like hey, hey. Right. <laughs> i just i, I just I don't stood off in the back i just don't yeah. i did yeah. i split i split off yeah. and i walked away because right. i was like you would have done it right you're full of no shit. You no i wouldn't have liked to do that so they were like they were like louder Guaranteed. louder and like shouting at us and jump jump and i was yeah. like Oh, whoa. Right. Jump, reporter, was, jump. It was just so, right. yeah, I was, I'm like, that's not icky. a mug. It was icky. Yeah. Yeah, you said you didn't, um, you said you weren't going to meet anybody. So there was I no didn't friends that you were going to meet anybody. Have, and you, did. you made a friend. I did. I made two friends. Nice. It was the people who wanted to drink the most. Oh, good. Uh, and, and, that, and those were? Well, one of them was somebody I actually had known from my, uh, he was at After Buzz when we started. Oh. He's now at E. Who's that? Uh, and his name is Billy, mm-hmm. and he's amazing. And he was just like, so awesome and friendly and had the same mentality as I did. And then I met this awesome girl, Liz, who's from Canada, so you know oh. she's nice because yeah. they just do that. Uh, and we became like a trio band. We rolled together hard. Oh, else. oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, we, when um, uh, we were waiting uh, for a, a long bite, time. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Well, the three of us were doing everything together until Ooh. this one, we were waiting <laughs> for the junket for like six plus hours and this one guy was sitting next to me waiting. We struck up a conversation. We were talking for like two hours his name is Steven um, and I'm asking Steven all different questions he was like I've been at this a really long time and we just went at it and then finally I was like Steven what's your last name because I think he was putting his number on my phone he was like Weintraub I was like huh Steven Weintraub Steven that's on Twitter <laughs> I was like do you, have a, do you have a nickname he was like yeah yeah I do yeah. I was like is it Frosty he was like, oh, that's a little creepy. And I was like, oh, I do Collider Live. Yeah, like, what is, what is why that? is that creepy? That's like what he gets yeah. his handle on Twitter. What, no. is, what, is, what Cause, is Just because like, I knew it. Yeah. And he was like, I had been talking to him for hours what at this laugh, point. What did his laugh sound like? Does it sound like this? Uh, <laughs> I, honestly, God damn. It's so creepy. Uh, that's him. And he was so excited that I knew who he was. Mm. He had no idea who I was. He was like, listen, I'm going to be real with you. I haven't been listening to your show, but I hear really good things. It's great. And I thanks, was like, Steve. I appreciate it. I was like, thanks, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've never read one of his articles. That's that's not true, right? Well, they're, they're pretty good. No idea. They, I don't uh, think he writes, though. I think he just goes and does his trips to you know the junkets, and then he and, you know he does his thing. He built yeah. he, look, he built this thing, so you got to give him credit. Yeah, so he was... That's true. Does and, he write? Uh, I don't even know if he writes. Yeah, he does. Mm. Um, I was really excited, though. So those are my three friends, and uh, I felt like a rock star. We were front row to the concert, um, which was wild. I, but then it was one of those junkets where, like, instead of getting six minutes with each cast member, we got... Two and a half minutes with oh, all four of them in one room. What? Ouch. What a gyp. They, they, After they, waiting for five hours, um, they paid for you to go. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it was just—it was just one of those. They cared more about us having a good experience right. than the actual interviews, which is a tactic, and yeah. that's fine. Did you interview Adam Lambert? No, no, but okay. uh, he was amazing in the show. Oh, was he, he was amazing, I and we got to talk to uh, Roger and Brian like cool. backstage. I saw and the pictures. Whole... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. Uh, Brian May kissed my forehead. Oh. He said, "Hi, honey." No. Oh. Give me a little. He was like, Did you hey. tell him about your your history of music? Uh, no, I didn't because it was just like I wanted to know about him, and yeah. I was asking him questions. And who gives a fuck about me? Uh, I don't like that you do that. Oh, I don't like that. You go, you you beat yourself up too much. I'm, that's one of my things I want to do. I gotta fix that. I don't know how I'm gonna fix that. I think it's impossible to do. But don't you think it's maybe endearing my self deprecation? No, I don't no. I'm it. so fucked. <laughs> yeah. That's true about me. Oh. That's true about me. It was really good though, Christian, and yeah. I and I feel like you put me in the right mindset for it because good. I was really like I'm gonna sit next to nobody and talk to nobody, and then I was like. 
Look, there are people. Yeah. All right, so I did something good. So stuff. I gave you a little bit. You did. All right, so maybe I can talk you out of this thing. I'm gonna try. I don't know about All that. Right, one. Fine. That's like a whole lifestyle choice. All right, let's talk about movie news. Um, there's some stuff. There's a lot of shit that went down over the weekend. There's some some just overall movie news. There's uh, box office stuff that went down, and then there's some icky stuff that I know is out there as well too. And Riley, what the hell's going on? Uh, you want to start? Bart, uh, Burt Reynolds passed away. Oh, Burt Reynolds yeah. did pass away. Right. Uh, Florida State, Florida State, yeah. Florida State. Florida mm-hmm. State. He was teaching there. I can't believe it. I know. He was and doing some acting uh, yeah. workshops. Yeah, you know, he was, he had a heart attack. Um, he Was it a heart attack? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he is 82 years old. And, I mean, he wasn't, you know, he was he was he kind was of... He was in the hospital when he had the heart attack, right? Yeah, he's kind he was... of frail. I mean, when he, as he was going... And I don't know if he lived hard. You would assume Burt Reynolds lived hard. Uh, but I don't want to assume that. Um, I mean, or just... Guess that, but yeah. but I mean, he was a dude that was uh, he was a badass, you know, he's a rock star, and um, he was like he was like 70s, he was the, he was the man, um, and he was a guy that, yeah, he was just uh, all the thing I, for for better or for worse. The one thing I always think of besides boogie nights with him is when him and host of Double Dare Mark Summers got into it. Do you ever see when they, they please bring up that clip, Burt Reynolds and Mark Summers fight on uh, I forget what it's one of the late night shows, they like. I think yeah. I have seen this. Have you ever seen this? Burt Reynolds has punched his yeah. fair share of people in the face. Yeah, it's it, this, but watch, like you see it, just it, you gotta, yeah, yeah. Like you, you go to the actual, it was amazing. It was Jay Leno. Um, he has a huge head. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. You gotta go back, go back, go back. Right, right, uh, right in the middle. It's like right in the middle. Stop. Now yeah, go back a little bit more, a little bit more. No, no, no. You're not going forward. You're going right there. Yeah. He says something about his wife or whatever it was. Oh no, he already did it. Find the clip. Find the clip, and then we'll go to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he's got like a drink of water, and he slaps it out of his hand. But anyway, Burt Reynolds, um, who was 82 years old, badass, and, and you know he's. Uh, it's it was sad. Clark, how'd you feel about it when you heard? I mean, I I th- think a lot of us knew it was a long time coming. Like he had just been at the Egyptian, I think, yeah. um, and did a did a Q and A, and I think he oh, oh that was Whoa. it dumps the water on him yeah. Uh, th- so th- that's when I think of Burt Reynolds. Actually, I think of Norm Macdonald on SNL, she, totally. Celebrity yeah. Jeopardy, yeah, yeah, yeah. just like the hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I had heard from people who had seen him at the Egyptian doing a Q and A. I think it was, or at least promoting a book. Like he, I think he realized he was at the end of his life. I think yeah. he realized it was coming. He just did an interview about his relationship with Sally Field. I think in the last year yeah. or two, oh, really? basically saying how he really regretted like being so awful to her because mm. they they were dating. I think and and I think she was like really really into him and and he was you know at the he he's thinking I'm the hot shit and I'm whatever exactly and and he was like I shouldn't have done that yeah. like it was a, he regretted and it and he just had that movie that came out I think at the beginning of this year where it was basically he yes was, yeah and he yeah. Was the last like, per, the actor that's last performance where yeah. he was doing the Q and A I think yeah. was 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 that well, it was like kind of true to life you know? somebody yeah. gonna correct me the last movie the last and he was called? selling a bunch of stuff right do you last remember he was doing like an estate sale, he was selling everything he had. Really, he yeah. was like on. So I think he knew. Yeah. He knew. It was, it was sad. He, he was supposed to film Tarantino's uh, right. Once right. Upon a Time in well, Hollywood. That's the question. They're Never not, made they, it. Well, they're going to recast him. I'm sure they're so. going to recast. Yes, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, all right, Riley. What's next? Uh, Tiff. You know, let's uh, put it on a good note here. Yeah. Uh, Tiff started. A lot of reviews coming out right now. A lot of Oscar buzz. Uh, Midnight. And we're we'll talk about it later. Probably the Halloween movie uh, premiere. How's the buzz going on that one? Pretty good. Is Great. it good? It's yeah. really okay. solid. Yeah, what are you hearing solid. about it, Clark? Yeah, I mean, all the reactions out of TIFF are that the movie is brutal. Brutal. It's cool. it's it's uh, enough of a nod to the you know franchise fans yeah. over the last forty years, but also completely stands on its own. And that Jamie Lee Curtis is a fucking boss. Yeah, so I love brutal, it. not the like millennial term yes. that's bad. Brilliant. Brutal, like no, like like a really like basically making slasher movies scary again. Yeah. And Michael Myers is scary again, like brutal as. In the violence is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I saw at at, at Comic Con they show talking about a tracking shot that opening scene. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but like mm-hmm. they show a scene. I'm not gonna tell you. Relax. Um, but they, <laughs> but they show. They just show a lot, and the way that it's set up is very reminiscent to yeah, the, original. the original. I think yeah. what you were talking about just appeared in the latest trailer. Oh, like, oh yes, like, yes. The, I, I have seen that mm-hmm. in the yeah. in the trailer. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Cops has a uh, corn cobs in his ear right now. Yep. No, that's sure cool. I blocked that out for a second. I still haven't seen any trailers and I'm so excited. Good man. Yeah, man. I'm telling Good you, man. I think you're going to be happy. I think I'm going to be happy too. Um, because yeah. this, this, When is it coming? 
October? October. Yeah. October 19th. October. Because yeah. it doesn't matter what these, it was a stupid thumbnail that these dopes came up with. I don't hate horror movies. I don't, what I, what I don't like are the silly slasher ones right. that, and, or like just dumb ones, you know, like, like when you have truth or dare and stuff sure. like that. And what's yeah. your favorite? I mean, of all time, I mean, I'll say the things that I've seen recently that I've liked a lot. I thought that it's got, that horror movies have got a bit of a resurgence to where they've been a lot better and I've been excited to see them lately. I think that it, I think Conjuring, Conjuring 2, for Sinister, um, I think that those types of movies, and there are probably other ones that I'm, that you can school me on here that I'm, I'm missing out on that I've. The th Thing. Yeah, have you watched the thing, thing yet? I still haven't seen it. It's why, why? It Just out of curiosity. Heart. It's um, I um, JT got it for my birthday a few years ago. Can I have that? <laughs> no, you're never gonna watch I it. I will watch it. I, I almost I, I it picked it up. I picked it up one time, okay. and I had it ready to go, yeah. and then I didn't watch it. You know, it's like. Um, it's a good I story. mean, as I have said on on Twitter, I shouldn't have to beg you to watch one of the greatest movies in the last forty years, but it's such a um, do guy movie too. Thing. Like, oh yeah, I mean, it that's really what you is. said about that movie, or you just the said thing. that in you general. Said about the thing. I mean, yeah. yeah, about the thing. The thing. Like, yeah. I yeah, I every it's time classic Kurt every time he's on Twitter and he's like, who you know, and people are like, oh Christian, you have to watch it, and I'm like, okay, you know what? Right. If he doesn't want to watch a great movie, <laughs> like fuck him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, but it's true. She's not lying. Oh, by the way, pull that clip off. <laughs> He ain't lying, or she ain't but, lying from uh, a um, If you needed another reason to watch it, it really is like it, it's it's really a guy movie. It's yeah. really cool. Um, I just really think you'd like it. Okay. I mean, listen, you I would I, like it. Everyone tells me that I like it. I know, yeah. and I want to see it. Everyone yells at me for not watching it, and it's and I will. But anyway, uh, I do want to see Halloween. I'm looking forward to it. Strangely enough, my my wife who hates. Uh, slasher movies, not not slasher movies. That's not true. She it's like the supernatural mm. kind of. Like she won't watch Conjuring. She won't watch any of that. Not because she thinks they're bad movies, just because that type of shit yeah, really scares, scares the shit her. out of her. Yeah. But like Ooh, she she wants yeah, to see it. She she says to me, she goes, "I want to see Halloween." And I go, Ooh, "What?" Oh yeah. And she's like, "Yeah, I want to see it." She's like, it's just nostalgic. Yeah. And and I was like, "Okay, you know, we're not. You're gonna have to wait for the Blu-ray because we can't take the kid." Christian, no. what year do you start letting your kids see? Horror movies. That's a great question. Mm. Do they have 13. any interest? Do they have? You I got to see if she's got an interest in it. Right now, we're trying to figure. I'm still. My my daughter's big into Harry Potter and to Star Wars, and like we, they're still still making sure she's ready for those types of movies. Hey, Harry Potter's sensitive. scary sometimes. That's those what spiders I mean. In the second one, that's scary. She, she can she can get through the first. She can get through the first, she got through the first four, and there was something in the fourth one when uh, Voldemort shows up for the first time. She's like, don't say his name. She walked she walked in and she's like. Can you watch it with this with me? She's like, I want to watch it. I just want to watch it with you. And oh, like, you that's know, cute. Yeah, so that's sweet. Yeah, he anyway. was creepy the first time. Yeah, yeah. I can see part that. Four, yeah, yeah. When he shows yeah, up, he and shows she, up yeah. So that scared her. Yeah. Um, has she seen ET? She has. She loved Is, it. Didn't scare her at all. No, that didn't scare her. Nice. Uh, she doesn't get as scared for much shit lately. You know, she's getting older, so it's like it's it's cool. It's it's better to watch movies. Whether they're playing Harry Potter actually at Century City Mall. But they, they like last week they played one and two. This week they played three and mm. four. So she hasn't seen she hasn't seen five yet. So I'm thinking maybe oh, I'll see five. Oh, who's seen more movies, her or Dorian? <laughs> oh, oh, classics. Yeah. I mean, I bet you that my daughter's probably seen more of the classics than Dorian yes. has. Like uh, classics, not like the newer stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Bang like, up job parenting there. Yeah. yeah she just Good watched word. Goonies. She watched Goonies. She oh. loved Goonies. She loved, you, I forgot. You you like Goonies? Uh -huh. Okay. Because yeah. oh yeah, Goonies Roka doesn't like Goonies. What's Roka no. working on lately? Do you know what he's working I've never on? Met he's got, he's working on something. Yeah. Yeah. He's still working on his spoonsmanship. Oh. Okay, got it. I'm not sure what he's working on. I wonder how it's going. We should ask him. I saw I saw signs in the crowd. At the at Smoke Down Live, that said he's still working on his spoonsmanship. Oh my god, it's amazing! That's amazing. I love that so much. That's um, amazing. All right, what else is in the news? Uh, but well, more TIFF stuff. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. great reviews across the board for uh, Star Is Born. That was that's, that's, that's yeah. one that's winning the Oscar. It, that's one sticking out. I a am lot. so surprised to hear it. Yeah. I am too, you are? actually. Yeah, because um, I had uh, I knew somebody who was working on this that yeah. said that it was a challenge uh, to get. Uh, the right Gaga moment. Really? Well, well from everything coming. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> everything, everything coming out. Everything but coming I hear out. She's she's a, I hear she's amazing. People it's are everybody. Saying, and people, Bradley Cooper yeah. and Sometimes and Gaga it takes a little. Sometimes it takes a minute. Listen, yeah. she's. Right. The, this is the thing I'll say about Lady Gaga. I actually had a chance in. I think it was like March or like 2009 or something. I can't remember what it was. It was like this little club and like uh, Robertson. 
and she comes out. No, she wasn't famous yet. But she comes out, and I remember thinking, oh, she's just trying to be Madonna. This girl's just talented, but she's trying to be Madonna. And then flash forward, you know, she's super, she's huge, right? But then she's really leaning into the Madonna angle. Then she's wearing meat costumes or whatever she's doing, and it's like she lost who she was in the, on the talent, right? Then she got rid of all that shit. And I remember we were watching the Oscars one year, and they were, she's like, oh, here she comes to sing Sound of Music. I'm like, get out of here. It's her singing Sound of Music. And she was... Brought down the house. Brought down the house. That was the thing that changed me on her, and I went, this is an immense talent here. This is someone who is just over-the-moon talented, and when she was announced in this film, I was like, all right, give, you know, let's, let's give her a shot. Because what, what I know she was like American Horror Story or something, yeah, too. Yeah, I liked her in American Horror Story. Was she good yeah. in it? Yeah, that okay. season. It was a little bit of a layup for her, though. It wasn't like a... Right. It wasn't a stretch, but... Yeah. Was she, she a singer? But she brought it to no. the table. Well, mm-hmm. She played like a... Uh, was like a vampire queen or something? Yes. Okay. Like a, the lady mm-hmm. who sort of runs the hotel. Dark, yeah. It, but anyway, I mean, it was... It was not necessarily outside of her purview, but she wasn't playing an over the. T- <laughs> For as much as like a vampire queen is not an over the top character, mm-hmm. she there was a little. It was ground. It was as grounded as something like that can be. I was impressed by her. Yeah, I mean, and from all words That's coming great. out of Tiff, is everybody's impressed with her. But people are also really talking about Bradley Cooper, not just his performance, but the fact that he directed, he directed. this. I heard things about Bradley Cooper on the set in a positive light. Me too. That um, how. Well, first of all, he taught himself how to play guitar, uh, and then he also is um, he is a very giving director, from what I heard. He was because he's an actor, right? But he's also very caring to everyone, yeah. not just the stars, people around, making sure like the bit players, everyone too, and making sure that people were taken care of. And he really invested everything in his being to make this thing happen. And I heard from a lot of people, some people who were on set, of how much he was taking care of everyone. Good to hear it. You root for people like that. And I'm glad this yes. movie's getting the buzz that it did. I really wanted to see it beforehand. Now I'm over the moon. He's a massive player in this industry, and he's not to be underestimated. Yeah. And he, yeah. I really think we're we're seeing just the beginning of I him. can't wait to see it. Yeah. All right, Riley, what's next? Uh, t- sticking with uh, some TIFF stuff, yeah. but not so good buzz. Uh-oh. The Predator. Yeah, mm. seen it tonight. Woof, that Same. whole story is so like... Everything about across it. Across the yeah. board right yeah. now, it's a shit show. Yeah. Because of uh, what Love happened shit show. with Shane Black uh, uh, taking out his friend who was... Yeah. A sex, sex offender, sex a convicted offender. sex offender. Yeah. You can say and, it; that's what he is. Yeah. And and I was trying to word it, to, to, to word it like that. Or and he Olivia pled Munn, guilty. Right. And, and Olivia yeah, and Munn trying to entice the, a fourteen-year-old into a relationship. He pled guilty. Yes. And and Registered Olivia Munn is the only one speaking out, and she was at TIFF, and I don't know if you've seen some of the the footage of that. Yeah. Her co-star is sitting there, silent, yeah. while she's just banging the hammer, and good for her for doing it. Well, the thing that I saw with yeah. this, which kind of rubbed me the wrong way was the fact that um, the, she was. they made her kind of do she said she was open about it they made her do interviews by herself none of the cast would, would do interviews You're talking with about her Olivia. correct yeah. mm-hmm. so she was out there kind of doing she said it she's like you know it's it's sad that I have to be out here Like I, it's in my contract that I have to promote the movie so I'm out here promoting the movie but I'm doing it by myself I'm not sitting I would like to be here with all my cast but they're not and she's not taking anything back from the fact that she shunned this guy and I think what happened the guy didn't make any advances towards her or anything she just had found out that the guy was she was the only one who had to do a scene with him and I what see. I had oh. read was that the scene is him hitting on her incessantly oh. like played for laughs and so when she yeah and so she had to do this she had no idea that his background and I it see. all came down to Shane Black by the way like as in it's his buddy it, this is his buddy yeah. and 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 um, you know there I think it should be mentioned that Sterling K Brown did on Twitter say? Yeah, he. he I was gonna say I'm he not came out. there. He's like, I, I'm not at TIFF, but if I were, I would be there with you. Yeah. Um, you know. So, but yeah, that that was a situation. And it's a nice sentiment, but, right? But yeah, yeah. But right. you're not so. agreed. Agreed. Right. But um, with the with the Shane Black thing, you know, it's like now he's backpedaling and he's saying, you know, the first statement was. I willingly put my friend, it was a misun, meaning his pleading guilty was a misunderstanding or he told me the story and I am supporting him. Right. He's put him in a few movies. Yes, nice guys. And he had also said he was going to like produce one of his scripts that he had right. written. So then 
when all this kind of came out and Fox pulled the thing, now Shane Black is sort of backpedaling and saying, I just read the legal documents. I, I now know the real story. Right. And it's it, awful. And it's just I like, think that if you're gonna bad. if you're gonna have your your friends back or whatever that is, just fucking double, triple, whatever, quadruple down if that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, what it like, sounds like to me though, that's not what the case was. The case was that it was like his team, his agents and managers or whoever it was, is going, dude, you wanna work? You want to keep getting jobs? Yeah. You better you better denounce this dude. Also, quick. Yeah. talking about like the behind the scenes stuff. I mean, I don't know, but um, I have heard that this was a production that was very troubled yeah. and yeah. very studio involved, um, and meaning like Shane Black was not happy with what he was yeah. made to shoot and whatever. So you know, it's such Fox, a history right? of this. Fox, Fox, yeah, Fincher and, and Alien Three. Uh, well, you dude, know, it's so like much. The, they're like, big. Yeah. Alien franchises, Predator, this. Uh, it's the, Origins, they're noodling Wolverine around. Origins. Yeah, I they... hate going into a movie with this feeling. Yeah. Like, well, that's the you know, problem. We have to see this tonight, and you go yeah. into it, and it, you have the worst taste in your mouth yeah. already. It's like the movie has to work so hard to impress well, you. Well, the at reviews are already out, and I think, and Perry saw it, and she said, This is when you can tell. Like, there are sometimes, she's like, This is what gives reshoots a bad name. Yeah, because you know there are because we, we all agree that reshoots are necessary and reshoots happen all the time. But when you hear reshoots, reshoots, and you see a movie like this, I haven't seen it, but from from hearing what people are saying, is that you say, oh, well, they had reshoots. It's got to be like Predator. It's terrible. So I don't know. Uh, I'm going in tonight. I'm going to go in with open mind. I do want to see it. I hope that I hope that they can. Maybe I see it. I don't know what the hell people are talking about. I mean, that scene yeah. where that dude is gone. It's not in the movie. I had also read some headlines that said that. On the other side, maybe this was spin, but that you know, um, they the movie is gory, it's fun, mm. it's whatever. I've heard a few of those yeah. too. And you know that you, you you get what you paid for. Right. You know, it's a predator. It's predator. Movie. Yeah. Also, I think uh, Copster. I don't remember if it was you and I that were talking about this before, but maybe. the fact that they released the embargo as early as they did, yeah, mm -hmm. typically bodes well for a film. Now the actual reviews aren't boding as well, right. but they obviously had some feeling that this movie was going to be uh, received well. Yeah, I don't... And it currently has a 61% on run. I mean, Does that it? doesn't mean yeah. shit to me. How many, well, how, many, how many reviews? How many reviews, Brian? 24. We'll see what happens after tonight, because yeah. everybody sees it tonight. But that's still, that's not... That's... This morning, a lot of people and see it, too. And that was, when people saw it, was that prior to the news, that, or did that come out after the fact? Good question. Um, I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. know. I guess we'll I, Google that. I, I, I think, think it know, came out after. I think afterwards, because, yeah, yeah I think that it, it broke before the, the story, because TIFF was really the premiere of it, and that's where... Right, I, that was the premiere, and, they, and then saw Perry it. saw it. Uh, I was supposed to go, but I was but, sick. You yeah, know, It was already out. It was already out. I think it's our job not to let that affect our view of the movie. Yeah. It's your prerogative to not see a film, but if you're going to see it and review it, you can't. Yeah, you can't. I mean, that, well, also, the, the scene's been cut, right? right. You that know? scene has nothing to do with the overall yeah. quality of the movie. Correct. I mean, so, like, yeah, you, you shouldn't, if you do review it on that, then you're a terrible movie reviewer. Yeah. Ooh, wait, can I enter? Sorry, Whatever I don't want to change the subject. Please do, change it. But um, Suspiria, is that on your list? Oh, yeah. I've because heard mixed. the reviews, mixed. I've heard mixed. Everything I've, heard I've really been seeing great. is. Okay. I've, uh, yeah, great. Oh, oh I can't great. Wait. All right. yeah. So I talked to, I mean, I, I don't want to, hopefully he's. I don't want to jump it. the gun. No, but what I've said, no, you can jump the gun. I, so, um,. Alonzo Duralde, friend of the show, um, he saw it. And I think he he said he didn't love it. But again, I don't want I don't want to I want to if he didn't make his review out, I don't want to talk for him. So, um, but yeah, okay, good. So you guys, we're hearing great things. I guess that says twists critics. So maybe maybe the, maybe it is mixed. But everything I had been seeing said that it was fantastic. Also, though, what does twists critics mean? maybe uh, it means like in a some of them love it, it was, yeah. yeah. But but I I, I have I do know <laughs> that. Um, that the movie is long. Yeah. And then also, you know, I think that there's a, um, like, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I haven't seen it, so I want to yeah. see it. But um, more importantly, I'm thinking about dyeing my hair red. What do we think? Mm -hmm. I know, I like that Dakota Johnson, though. I was telling somebody, though, too, it's funny, I like her as an actress, but I do I find her very sexy. I was telling, yeah, I was telling yeah. her really sexy. I, I agree. I, I find do. her very sexy. I was telling, I told. It's the Melanie Griffith. It's like she's got great genes. I think so. I think yeah. that's what Melanie it is. Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. Yeah, because I was watching. Very attractive. And it's not because of those stupid movies she did. It was like, it was just something, there's something about her. She's like confident. She's confident. She's what really. What stupid movie? Uh, the, the, Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades of oh, oh, oh. shit box. Fifty Shades. Uh, yeah. I you. just don't consider that it's a stupid shades. movie. Do so you think she's sexy? Yeah. I don't. Oh, you don't. You're so, not looking yeah, at me. I get it. But yeah, so anyway. 
Uh, that's just she's my fine. thoughts on the thing. I'm not afraid to say it. I think she's, uh, I think talent is sexy. Yes, yeah. agreed. And I'm very excited to see her in uh, Drew Goddard's new movie, What's that? the Motel Ooh. movie. Or uh, Bad yeah. Times at El Royale. Yes. Times at El Royale. Yes, yes. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorite trailers. That's Chris Hemsworth, right? Chris Hemsworth, yeah. Yeah. John Hamm. Right. Yeah. Uh, who else is it? Uh, did you, did you Jeff Bridges. Did you see that old Jeff video? Bridges. I never realized this was out there that the Hemsworth brothers got into a scrap in a bar one time. No. Who the fuck is messing with those dudes? I, I don't know. Somebody fucking dumb. stupid. Real yeah. dumb. Yeah, one of them's Thor. That's what I mean. I, I, I think, think it was that before he's he was the Thor. Thor. But you it know, if, I, I, shit I think isn't it like a thing where um, guys who are who are big, the, people, uh, people always want to fight them. Yeah, it's like, like drunk. The, uh, you know, yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. It's I'm, Napoleon I'm brothers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, brothers fight. Yeah, I think that's it's why a, everybody always wants Liam, to fight me. Liam Hemsworth. Yeah, there it is. The third one. Uh, Liam Hemsworth got into a fight, and then yeah, look. So the, and then oh, and then Hemsworth. Um, Kind of stepped in, but it's like I think it was before. Yeah, it's 2012. No, I'm still Thor at that point. Oh yeah. But it's like yeah, it's like well, who's what are you doing? Yeah, and, it's always a thing with big guys. Like they people, I've heard um, people say that they always get challenged to fights, and not, so right, fighting is stupid. Go back. Yeah, fighting is. Roxy Deirdre Behar, I love her. There you go. Whoa. Yeah, they're just dragging this guy around like a He's rag doll. Like, yeah, look at him. It's like, come on. That's one it. of those. Oh, it's Liam. That's yeah, Liam. No, no. Chris is pushing his head down. Liam's the other one Go over there. Go see my movie. Yeah, it's like, it's like you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, hold this guy hey, before moron. I crush his head with my warm oh, hand. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. My favorite Chris Hemsworth story is Sorry. that when he did costume fittings for Thor, his neck broke the costume. Yeah. That's it was not too big. Like, I was like, yeah, mm, damn right. Hey. Like, who's fighting that's Thor? That's amazing. Dummy. Never did I get more tweets on this show than the time that I advised kids to fight. To fight. Yeah, don't uh, ever do that. Yeah, I got a don't lot of parents. I got a lot of parent hate on that one. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it wasn't actual advice. Uh, it's just what I would do. I understand. I'm not That's saying hilarious. follow me. Right. I'm just saying my truth. Right. They're, they're all garbage. It's people. important to speak your truth, right, what's, Christian. What's the uh, what's what's is that it? Is that everything? We uh, break? No, we got to do some breaking news here. Uh, okay. Not well, breaking, but this morning uh, Clark is here. We got to talk about this Jordan Peele. Oh yes, potentially. Tell me, tell me. Potentially in talks to produce a remake of Candyman. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, I, I, so I read the article. No, it's to. exclusive to uh, bloody, disgusting. bloody, yeah, yeah this is and, exclusive. And basically, the story is because it's still a non-story at this point. But basically, the rights to Candyman have become available, I see. and nobody's done anything with the franchise in a long time. And so, Monkey Paw, which is Jordan's yeah. company, who is producing Lovecraft Country and Twilight Zone and a handful of other. things, Things. And his next movie, Us. Yes, right? yeah. correct. Um, they are talking about, you know, jo basically Jordan is talking, his company is talking about like picking up the rights. And, um, you know, of course, like it's the same old conversation that horror fans always have. Why do we need to remake it? Candyman is amazing. You know, oh, this is great. Or, oh, Jordan Peele should be doing original things. I know you're going with this, Clark, because I saw your hot take. Yeah. And I like it. It's my perfect. hot take, so here's my hot take. If you're take. ready. Mm. Yeah, I'm steaming. Um, my hot take is that Candyman is one of the best genre movies of the last 30 years. Mm. Not only is it scary and well acted, it has a great, like the, the story itself, the message is, is amazing, and it's talking about real stuff. And I think it was Ryan Turk and I on our old podcast, The Bloodcast, we were oh, yeah. like trying well, to, we were trying to figure out why did Candyman get lost in the shuffle? Like mm. the people who know it, know it right. and love it. But Helen. it's, <laughs> but um, it's, it came out around the time of Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs was 91. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it won all the Oscars and all that stuff, and Candyman's 92, and it just sort of got lost. So my point is, I think that if someone like Jordan Peele attaches himself to this project and puts his spin on it, mm. especially considering the tone, there's a lot of um, talk about race and class and things like that in, these, in this movie, not only is it timely and interesting, but it will hopefully shed light and remind people to go back and actually watch the original. Yeah. Um, and as we talk about in horror all the time, the Thing is a remake. The Fly is a remake. There are yeah. a lot of great Martin Scorsese's The Departed, Departed. is a yeah. remake. Like, we can do this dance. That part of it, I agree with you. Yeah. I think that when it comes to remakes alone, depending on what, you know, a lot of times what the remakes are, I agree. I think that even if something like The Karate Kid, right? Mm -hmm. To which I actually thought the remake, I, I was I was so against when they made it, but I and I think it actually came out pretty good. And I mean, I the still, Kung Fu Kid. 
Is, it, was it called the Kung Fu? Yeah. It should have been called. Well, whatever, yeah, whatever yeah, it was. Karate. It was called karate. But, but the it was point, called karate. Point was, it was, it was, it was well done. It was fine. Honest, and the funny thing is, because that that the guys that made Cobra Kai actually so good made the uh, have the had the conversation with the Smiths um, because who own the rights now, and they were all on board with now what we got with Cobra Kai. So it all worked out. But the point was that that movie was fine. But it did. You watch how many people rewatch yes. the original because of it. I think that take is is one hundred percent correct. More people would go back and check it out the thing that i kind of agree with everyone else here that the, the original complaint is i want to see jordan peele do other stuff now he is he's doing us i know i think that if he's doing if he's not directing it and he's producing it that's what it yeah cool that's what i don't want right now is that that's what he's that's doing that's the yeah. report that's the report if, he's, if his company's just producing it and he finds somebody else new filmmaker someone else too someone bring bring someone under his wing and he works mm -hmm. i'm on board I want to see what else he can do. Same way that I want to see, you know, I think that we're getting some really talented actors turned directors, you know, whether it's Bradley Cooper, you got Krasinski now, you got um, you got Jordan Peele. I want Ben Affleck to get his shit, to, you know, together. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm hoping for he's coming back because I thought his three movies, three but out of the four were great. He already is, even if nothing he's ever happened to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, three, but, I wanna see, but that's what I'm saying. is that I loved his first three movies and loved the last one, but I want to see him come back, and I'm rooting for him to, because I think he's an amazing actor, uh, director. Um, again, another established actor, director. Uh, you can hate him if you want, but Mel Gibson, very, very talented director. Not yeah. talking about he's a talented director. Yeah, he's a, he maybe you don't like him as a human. You might not like him as a human, but you can't deny he's an amazing director. <laughs> he's a good director. Anyway, point is there are a lot of great actors that have turned into uh, directors. Yeah, and I think Jordan Peele is on the cusp of being one of those, and I want to see him do more and more and more. And You're more. gonna get us, and he, this is yeah. yeah, his production company. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Bring back Tony Todd too. There it is. Right. Yeah. I I have a feeling that if they do, Tony Todd will be. Um, will be involved somehow, so. just as like a, t a tip of the hat. And The Purge TV show is up there in the mm. corner. Dur Anthony Hemingway is a director. He he directed the pi the pilot for sure of The Purge. Um, and uh, I am going on record as saying that I would love to see Anthony Hemingway direct a Candyman remake. Okay. Okay. He is nice. he directed on um, People vs. OJ. He oh, okay. I directed on Treme. Yeah. Um, he directed. I want to say. Is it the movie Flyboys George Lucas produced? Mm. Uh, yes, yeah. Flyboys. I want to say Anthony Hemingway directed Flyboys, but um, he's a guy that I was developing a genre project that, uh, and, and I was looking at him, and I've been following him for a long time. He's incredibly talented. I've interviewed him before, um, but he not only is he a person of color, he's he's a he's he's gay. He's out, okay. and he just got married. And so I think that there's a lot that you know he, in addition to forget all about like. In addition to him being a fabulous director, and he is, he's a great director, and he understands genre, but he also has some personal things that I think I would like to see explored through maybe the the, um, the lens of Candyman. Is that yeah. what he, Red he, Tails. I don't know that much. Yeah. Ah, uh, Red Tails. Oh, that was right. a long time ago. Is that, yeah. the one, is that the one with, that's the George Lucas, George Lucas one, right? Yeah, George Lucas. Oh, Flyboys is James Franco. That's, yeah. that's right. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right, look. So, so he's my pick. All right, so that was a lot to cover in the first hour. It was a lot of fun. Um, when we get back, <laughs> we might have some more movie news to recap a little bit here too. We're going to talk to some upcoming horror movies. We're going to talk a little bit about the the live schmodown, the experience there. We're going to talk to Frank Janish, Josh McCuga. When we get back, make sure again hashtag Collider Live. Get part of the conversation. We'll take some stuff from you guys on Twitter after the break. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video Podcast Network. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you.
Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible Redbox movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an ex expert panel of guests, including John Rocha, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hey everyone, John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day, and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Movie Mance. And just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week, I'm joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows. And it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. AM Pacific only on Collider Video. And we're back. It's the uh, Collider Live show. Collider Live, Clark. Collider, Collider Live. Live. I'm ready. Yeah, it's not Schroeder. It's Collider Live, and it is Monday morning, and I'm joined by Clark Wolf, Roxy Stryer, Mark Woo! Riley, and uh, we were look, we talked about a lot in the first half there too. We're going to talk a lot more in the second half. We're going to break down some of the wonderful stuff that happened at the Schmodown Live, which was an amazing event. Got to meet some cool people. And yeah. And we'll talk about that because Makuga's going to come in here. Frank Janish will come in, and we're going to kind of break that down because. Fucking Schmodown Live. <laughs> How do we know Frank? <laughs> Frank is the co-host of the movie trivia Schmodown, the Schmodown Rundown, which is essentially like our sports center for the Schmodown. It does very well. And that's how we know him? Yeah, well, I know him through, so Aaron Turner was the guy who started 
the Schmodown rundown. And he, he essentially, so when, when they were doing the After Schmo show, which is now evolved into the Afterthought show, mm-hmm. um, Aaron Turner had an idea to do that for the Schmodown. And he said, what is, you have like a sports center for the Schmodown. I said, send me a pilot and I'll listen to it. And I liked what he was doing. And then he found Frank Janish. And now Frank and Brad Gilmore are the hosts of that show. It's doing really well. I just look, I mean, it does consistently between thirty to 40,000 downloads an episode on uh on Apple Podcasts, you can find it on the Collider Factory feed. Badass. They really, they have some great interviews. Clark was just on a couple of weeks ago. How um, was it? It was fun. It was really yeah, fun. I those was guys happy get into to be it. there. Yeah, yeah, it was they, cool. They get into they it. They were cool. Um, so Frank will be in here to talk about it. He interviewed some fans, and I was really humbled by the response of those fans. It was the best crowd as far as investment that I've seen so far. Like, the last event was awesome, and they were really in it for sure. Um, but there was just something about, like, the. I felt like every fan, like, knew the history and everything that was going They were, like, so tuned in. And I can't wait to kind of get everyone's thoughts that were that was there, or maybe questions that people had who weren't there about it. So, um, but let's get into a couple more things, Riley, in the world of movie news. Mm, there yeah. was uh, the box office. What happened? Yeah, the box the office box report uh, is out, and the Nun is the biggest opening in the Conjuring universe so far, beating Conjuring and Conjuring That's Two, crazy. which I can't believe, at a fifty-three point five million. That's such a big. Which I, a big I, I mean, that is a huge number. Uh, uh, it's great. It's officially ushering in. The horror movie season, and everybody's already changed their Twitter handles on on, <laughs> on Twitter. To, and I'm wait wait till October. Yeah, I know. Wait till That's October. So hard. Yeah. I'm so confused by this because I didn't see this movie because I heard it's a stinker. It has bad reviews. Mm-hmm. So people don't care. Okay. There's nothing out it, right it's now. It's done nothing for me, and that, that like that. Yeah. It's it, it just, the, just the marketing feels so doesn't fucking look. gross in my ears. Yeah. Oh, Every that? time well, they do. Well, that. now they're gonna do it again, right, Peter? Well, does it not affect you? I, I don't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a preference, it was not that. I love Clark Wolf yeah. so much. So, you know, that's what we do in this show. You the don't best. like it, we do it again, right, Frida? Yeah, just uh, fun fact. Well, well, I'm trying to drink my tea, too, and it like is going yeah. down. What, what's worse for you, the burps or the farts? The, fu- the Whatever that exact one is, that one's Too got wet. like a weird red. It's the wet. It's the wet sound. All right. Oh. All right, anyway. The well, register. I will say about the nun, something <laughs> <laughs> something that I think is interesting is um, aside from <laughs> aside from uh, you know, the one little baby teaser and like a handful of baby little clips, there was no advertising for this movie. Right. Except for the poster that, that I was in, apparently. <laughs> The, Everybody, what? what? You saw the poster. Pull, pull it up. No, oh, it looks okay. like me. Uh, wait, Everybody wait, wait, said it looked like me. Does it look like you? What? Uh, how does he, how does he pull it up? He does not look like you. It looks like Marilyn Manson. Good. 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 Which that's one? Which one? Where? Oh, that one. That's how Riley looks when he wakes up. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that's that's me. That's him when you wait, say he's got the shits. Where are you guys seeing Riley? Yeah, I don't get it. a lot of people sent it to me and said, "Oh, I didn't know Riley was in the Oh, you know what? I did see the one. There's some. But you can't just tell the guys, "Hey, bring it up." And then it just, and then it's just like random pictures of none. Do you have one? Do they have the picture you're it's like talking about? It's the meanest about? thing anybody could ever know. say to you. Yeah, it's weird. But yeah. anyway. that, that one, that one, that one. Oh yeah, which, it is that one. Oh yeah, yeah. That one. They can't see you say that one. Not I, that one. Oh. Not that one. Go to go okay, no, go left. Go down. Down. Go down. Guys. down. Jesus Christ. Guys, stop talking to him. Down. Right. Keep going down. Keep down, going down. 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 Stop. That right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is Riley. That looks like Riley. A little oh, bit. No. Yeah, a little bit. That's you from The Conjuring too, though. You are smoking crack. Yeah, I don't. That is, it's, don't you don't think so? Don't see it. Yeah, I can see it. What part of it? That's not okay, even promotional material. That's from The Second Conjuring. Yeah, a lot oh. of people were tagging me going, hey, Riley, I, I did you know it. you're in the nun? I see it. I see it. Well, are you making a joke? No, I'm dead serious. Which I can part? see it. Which part? He looks like him in his face. It looks like you. In the face part? In his face. The whole face. A little bit. I'm telling you, if you dress, if you did, if you put that stupid thing on, for Halloween, you could look like that. We you were could, talking about that last time. I could Ninja, look like that. No, wear? but I mean, look just like that creepy thing. Uh, if I put I, that on, I could look like that creepy thing. No, I so don't could you. Me. So could she. Stop that. Can we talk about how in The Conjuring 2, my favorite part, Patrick Wilson, like calmly sitting in his kitchen yes. painting, and and how he's like, oh yeah, I just had this weird dream, and he turns <laughs> around and it's this, and it just like he's just like, yeah, what up? Good morning. I made coffee. Anyway, I've been dreaming about this, right. and it's like. Anyways, I was thinking about a spinoff yeah, movie. It's yeah. So like, 
Oh my god, it's so funny. It's just, it's so funny to me. Yeah, but I, 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 wonder, I don't you know. You have a weird sense of humor, I know, my friend. I really do. Because it's just he's so nonchalant about it. He turns around this horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, wish, I wish that it, I mean, not, I don't ever wish a movie not it's, to make money. But what I'm saying is I wish The Conjuring 1 and 2 would have done better because I think those are probably better movies. Really I don't surprised? understand. Oh, the yeah. release date. Well, we yeah, need to talk about this. Of course. Yes. Because um, out. Conjuring 1 came out in October. No, July. No? Yeah, summer. It was a summer movie. It was a summer movie. Oh. Um, and then Conjuring 2, also a summer movie, but moved up, right? Wasn't it March? Can we, or May? Sorry, May? Let me look. Can we yeah. Google this? But what is this weekend? This weekend, this past weekend, mm -hmm. it weekend. Right. Last oh, summer. Wow. Yeah. It, so New Line, who also produces the Conjuring movies, what do we got? June. Conjuring June. 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 10th. Exactly. Yeah. So July is Shit. the first Conjuring. They move it. It's a phenomenon. June, they move it up. They're Keep like, we're, up, com we're competing in summer movie season. Here's mm -hmm. the thing with that, Clark, though. Yes. You see the box office for that. $320 million, right? Yes. In, in the U.S.? Is that so much made for well, U.S.? Well, that says U.S. dollars. Okay. So mm -hmm. I don't know. So bring that up. See how much it's made. it made overall because I don't think The Nun's going to catch the Nun. No, no. and to... this is the thing. Yeah. So we are, we're, I think New Line is capitalizing on post-Labor Day. Now everybody is drinking pumpkin spice lattes and changing their handles right. on Twitter. It's, it's Halloween. It's, too it's, soon. it's fun. What is the handle thing you guys are talking yeah. about? Uh, so it's like last year I was Clark's Werewolves. Uh, you know, right. like you do. Yeah, I, was, I was Riley the 13th. What, yeah. What's mine? Uh, you got to make it up, don't you? Oh, Roxy, are you question. making people do it for you? Yeah, I guess so. The Roxy Slays Horror it. Picture Show? <laughs> oh! The Roxy that's Horror Picture Show. And this is why show. I make people do it for yeah, me. That's good. There you yeah. go. And that's way better than anything See, I could have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She nailed it on one shot. So, uh, have you been thinking about that for a while? No. Yeah. That's no. worldwide. What's that? That's worldwide. Yeah, three yeah. worldwide. It made no, more worldwide. foreign yeah, yeah. than it did here. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but anyway, so so yeah, I think New Line was really smart with their strategy. No competition. Crazy Rich Asian, mm. Asians has been out for several weeks now, which is yep. great. Um, and uh, and now we're we're at, it's like unofficial end of summer, so now we're it's fall. Yeah, it's already and, made 132. Yeah, and so wow. yeah, it was a huge international opening for the wow. Nun as well. But I do think you're right. I, I think we're gonna see a really big drop. But maybe we won't. Who I'll give knows? you. I'll give you another reason why it did well it's an hour and 36 minutes yeah that's Easy another peasy. But it, it, well no you can play it can more. we yeah. talk about how uh it is r-rated so the fun story about the first conjuring is that they did not mean to make an r-rated movie oh, and no. if you watch the first conjuring movie there's no violence there's no sex it's just so scary it's scary yeah. and they were the, like the test audience they were like that wait we have something here i remember this it, yeah. was, right, right. it was coming out where it's like it, this is the scariest movie we've seen in a long time yeah mm -hmm. and but so they really embraced they it. got this r rating and the and the and the producers because i actually asked them about this the producers were like what can we do to appeal this and the mpaa was like nothing it's too scary and they were like okay well i guess we have an r-rated movie what's fascinating to me now is that Every single spinoff in the Conjuring universe has been a an R, R rated. rating. They right. they are not shying away from it. And for fifty three million dollars for an R rated movie franchise that's movie, yeah. that's that's really impressive. Cops, I hear you moaning back there. You not like the Conjuring? No, I like the Con. I think it was hyped a little bit too much. I, I the do first Conjuring. I think the first one was a little hyped. I gave it a five I saw, out of five. Spoon. I don't. Get, I, I saw it. I don't get that. Let, 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 let him talk. Yeah, let, let me talk. talk, Riley. No, hey, I'm kidding. Shut up, okay, all right. Hey, easy. Yeah. Happy Monday. We had our coffee. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I thought it was great or fine, whatever. But I, I do think <laughs> that at first that the whole R-rated thing was a little gimmicky. But seeing how the franchise has continued forward with this rated R trend, it obviously works. And it worked in their advantage that first time because it did build that hype that, you know, that's so scary we have to make it rated R. So then they keep going and then Conjuring 2 is better. Is that? Oh, Copster, no. no yes. I don't See, so. that's interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, Copster always has those hot takes. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> a, that's a real hot take. Like the scene with either. Patrick Wilson oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. playing guitar is probably better than anything in the first Conjuring movie. That that's Cops not even. Let, let, let Clark yell at Comstock. No, Please no, Clark. I'm just saying that that's. That, I don't even know what to say to that because <laughs> because I I have said many times it's weird that I'm talking to him and I can't see him. Yeah, look at his radio. <laughs> but um, I, I've seen that I've said this many times. For me, um, that scene. I think James Wan is going to be the next Steven Spielberg. Wow. And 
I always point to, in The Conjuring 2, that scene. The movie stops. It stops for character. And to me, that scene is akin to, in Jaws, Mm -hmm. Brody and his kids sitting at the table just making faces Mm -hmm. at each other. It's this super heartfelt moment in the middle of a really scary movie, right? So, Cobster, while I don't disagree that that scene is beautiful and really important... I don't know how you say it's better than anything in the Conjuring One because that's not what we're talking. Like, no, that- of course I'm I'm being harder than I really than I really probably should be because I do enjoy the first one, but I don't know. There was something about that first one that I felt like maybe they took it a little too serious, and it it's a little bit been there, done that. But I'm fine with been there, done that because that's all horror films, and when it's handled appropriately, then that's when I can kind of forgive that. Whereas I think for me, on like on a personal take, The Conjuring 2 kind of took the silliness to another level and I enjoyed that a little bit more. It kind of was a little bit more self-aware of what was going on. Yeah. I know a lot of people weren't a fan of the Crooked Man stuff, but I, I love the Crooked Man. We, no, we said this on Nightmares yeah. 1,000 times. We wanted Crooked Man more than The Nun. And yeah. The Nun, by weren't the way. Weren't they supposed to do The Crooked Man? The, the, well, it's in development. The okay. Nun was added completely in reshoots. Yes. Did you know that, uh, Cobster? I did not know that yeah now. so so basically this was like new line saying um we need an iconic mm-hmm. character something that people will see and go i know what that right. is and they added the nun and i guess valak valak in yeah. all in reshoots and for me that's my bigger problem with the conjuring 2 is the conjuring 2 to me is bloated like and and it's as a result of adding in the nun because you have old bill then you have the crooked man what's annabelle and annabelle's from the first annabelle one. is the cold open to yeah. the first okay. movie yeah but but yeah so then you add a third entity and i'm just like guys too much i'll like, tell you stuff. what though that they've done though Move over Dark Universe. Move over all the all, even hey. better than DC at oh, this yeah. point. At this yes. point, don't hate box me here. Office, yeah. But I'm saying box office wise, they have made a shared universe under the radar. Totally. Oh, yeah. And like because you look at like you said, Annabelle, the Nun. If they do Crooked Man, all this stuff like you can. They're really building off, and they're doing it with small budgets, mm-hmm. and they're hitting it inside of their universe, throwing it, and they're just piecing it together. They capitalized on two successful movies first, then throw. I think maybe they did Annabelle the first Annabelle after Conjuring. Yeah, Correct. They did. Yeah, yes. so and that was and that was a yeah. Halloween release. Yeah, it was. There was nothing, no other scary theatrical yeah. movies coming out that year. Okay, Annabelle is a stinker. The first one is like, I think it's, I think it is truly awful. Yeah, like, I agree. Truly <laughs> it's bad. Awful. It's pretty bad. I didn't think it was that bad, but there's definitely uh, we rewatched it again and then watched Creation, which yeah. is far superior. I'll and give the fact a- that they're giving a part three, which I'm like, how are you going to do yeah, that? Yeah, and did you hear what he said? It's perfect. A night at the museum. It's they're going into the, the, Warrens, the Warrens' basement with all the with all toys. scary shit. Oh, they're, cool. so they're going to be in. Okay, that's yeah. Cool. That's yeah, that's the pitch. But that's which smart. I'm like, okay, so, in. Yeah. Well, in James on that. Wan though, what's James Wan going to do? Is James Wan going to stay? In, because obviously, so let's say, I think Roke is still a lunatic. I think there's no way in hell. Um, uh, Aquaman. Aquaman makes 200 million opening weekend. It's a lunatic take. Yep. In, in um, but. I do think it will do well. I am excited. I like the trailers and the things that I saw at Comic-Con for it. I'm excited for it. I want to see how it pans out. Let's see. Let's say that this movie, Aquaman, crushes, right? And it, and it's like it, like you say. It really puts him on the next mm-hmm. level to start getting him into that conversation of one of the greats. Because right now he's a very respected director. Mm-hmm. But he's not in the great conversation yet. Um where does he go? Does he does he focus his attention more towards horror stuff? Does he go towards the big blockbuster stuff, or does he keep doing you know? I mean, I know what I think. I think that I think that James, uh, you know, made New Line a lot of money with uh, The Conjuring, and then he said, "Guys, I don't want to just do horror." And they said, "Mm mm," and then he went over and made Furious Seven. Yep. And Warner Brothers said, "Okay, wait a second, come back over here." And what you've seen is not only is his company Atom- Atomic Monster set up at WB New Line, but he is making them his name and his brand. Right, is making them so much money. On top of that. Lights Out was a James Wan, you know, they yeah. find Sandberg and they say, okay, James is your shepherd, right? Come on over. Right. He just did Shazam. Yeah, okay. Do you get what I'm right. saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So New Line, Warner Brothers is saying, we want you in our family. So what does he do next? Honestly, I think he does whatever he wants. Right. And on top of that, um, I, 
for me, announcing James overseeing Swamp Thing, a live action Swamp Thing series. Now, yes, it's genre, sure, but to me, that says Warner Brothers is really Very happy with Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, sure. okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they, the movie hasn't even come out yet. There so. he is. What oh, we hi. Let's get you over there. Yeah. In worst case, oh. he can always just fall back on the Conjuring. I he, think we we're owed Conjuring three because he didn't come back for Insidious three, and that broke my heart. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to see him just finally finish a trilogy. Just yeah. finish something. I, think I, I, I would want like that. to see well, that. I would Jeez. love for him to do Conjuring three. And werewolves. What do you think? No, uh -huh. three? Yeah. Did you ever see what we <laughs> what we've seen so far of him? I think is amazing. I think that his future very much so depends on Aquaman. If he can't knock this out of the park, it's going to be a problem. Not because of just him as a director, but because of the new technology he's creating. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to be the next Spielberg, you need to be able to create that technology and then implement it accurately. Yeah, I hope it's cool. So I, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good. Um, I think it's not going to be amazing. I think it's going to be really strong uh, and good. And enough for him to go to the next level and then I think we see him start to do like war movies. No, uh, we'll see. Ryan, what are you looking at? What do you got over there? Uh, what are we, no, just people just in the chat saying they want a Conjuring 3. They like Annabelle creation over Annabelle. That yeah. they, they do think that he's in the conversation right now because of the producing wise with James Wan. Yeah. I mean, he's producing a Stephen King Tommy Knockers, Arachnophobia yeah. remake. It's like he's... All for WB. All for and WB. Line, yeah. He has that... You put James Wan produced... The horror movie, they're going to show up. I want him to, I hope after Aquaman, well, he does Conjuring 3. I think it'd be fun. Speaking of producing in TV, too, to, to switch over a little bit, too. I haven't, I keep seeing every, I mean, I'm sure everybody here who's watching right now on YouTube, Castle Rock, the promotions are mm. everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. Um, and I like the Skarsgård who plays uh, Pennywise and he's in this show and, and the creepy music and, and the, that one line of, what are you doing here? Mm. And it's like, do I care about this show? Do I want to sit to watch this show? Are you watching Castle Rock? Um, I I watched the pilot, and I wasn't like, man, this is awesome because I don't. You know, I mean, clearly, I don't like yeah, horror yeah. movies. Uh, but I was going to give us a chance what? because I am a fan. Josh McCook is <laughs> here, by the way. No. Hey, everybody, great to see you. Um, I I love. I think that Stephen King. I mean, obviously, The Shining is a, a fantastic movie, and I thought it, as much as it scared the crap out of me, was like a really nice coming of age story. It was really fun. But I thought Castle Rock just seems like they're really shoving a shared universe in our face. Mm. And if you don't know what this place is... Like Shawshank and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah then yeah. You, you may not really like this show. Uh, what did you... Have you... Uh, well, I've only watched the, the pilot. And the reason is because I, I fall asleep really easily. <laughs> and I was like, this is a show that I have to watch when I'm awake. Like, yeah. I, I oh, yeah. really... Have, you really have to pay attention. Yeah. Um, I think what remains to be seen... And because I'm cops are correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but um, all of the episodes are not out yet. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I think it's the show is still going. I'm like mm -hmm. four episodes in. And I still need to catch up with it. But I think it's I, I, I agree with you where you had to kind of fully. Pay. It's a very slow burn, but I think it's an interesting slow burn because they're setting up a lot of things. And it's not too much in your face. Stephen King references. I think if you're a fan of the books that you'll pick up the obvious stuff like like the Shawshank Redemption name right. drop, or them just being at the at the Shawshank prison. But there's enough stuff in there, and I think good little trinkets of like, hey, uh, if, you, if you've come across this newspaper that's in the side corner, you're going to hear about a story from one of his other books. Right. So I think they're setting up enough stuff. I just, I'm interested to see where they're going to go. And how is it going to pay off? I think yeah. that's the bigger question, is that, like, I haven't seen, because nobody's seen the whole thing yet, so I haven't seen any reactions saying, oh, stick with okay. it, like, this really pays off. I have yeah. one, ep there's one episode left. I've seen them all. And what are you, you liking it? And not, you're not, I'm not mentioned. crazy. I, I, okay. I've been trying. I, I'm such a Stephen King fan. I, I, I get the references. The story is there, but I, I, it's slow burn, yeah. yeah. And it's just, it hasn't really gotten me. Yeah, you know what I'm kind of sick wait. of? Yeah. Slow burn. Did you watch the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of sick of it. There's just yeah. so much shit, and like, especially when burn. everything can drop at once. The slow burn thing, man. I know. Roxy, did you watch The Terror? Mm -mm. Did that was anyone slow burn. Else yeah, I you, you, you liked it. You like it? it? What really? is it? Tell, give him a cougar. Uh, the Terror is based on a true story. Do you have a second mic? He has got the second mic. Um, the Terror is based on a true story. It's on AMC. It came at the same time as 
It like released at the same time as that other show I was watching on AMC. That's really good. Uh, I don't know. Crap. I don't know, but Thank I you. liked. I liked the. Uh, I could have gotten that mic and I didn't get it, and that's my bad. Oh. Um, what AMC show did you really like? It, it, what, it's, it's not, not Hell on Wheels. No. Not, not the, the Silicon Valley one. No, Mayans is FX. FX. What the hell do I know about it? The anything? terror came out like a couple months ago. Yeah. And I oh, wasn't. Oh, not the Alienist. Are you talking about the Alienist? No, that's on TNT. Yes, it yeah. is. But um, I didn't know if you were confused. But <laughs> I wasn't going to watch the terror because it's called yeah. the terror. Right. And right. but I saw Night all these reviews. I saw these reviews. You know, like Haley Felch and, um, and and Allison Keen were like, "This is one of the best shows of the year." Yeah. So I watched it and I loved it. Yeah. I fucking hated, hated it. Oh wow. The terror. Wow. I, I dropped off. I turned into Elaine Bennis with the English patient. Sack lunch. Stop telling your fucking story in the desert and just die off. Oh wow. <laughs> like I hated the terror and to Mick your Mafia. It was on after Mick Mafia. To your point yeah. about slow burn, Roxy. Like I worry that Castle Rock because I love Andre Holland. Our good friend Mark Bernardin yep. is a writer on there. I love the idea of the shared universe. The cast is amazing. But if it pays off to nothing, the, especially right. when you introduce a supernatural element, and mm -hmm. I think that was my problem with the terror, was they keep hinting at this supernatural creature element. Oh, but we're not going to show it to you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, you need give to me have, the goods. You need right. to give me the goods. And Just so, a little bit. Do they, mention, do they mention Pennywise at all? No, it's, it's, re it's the kind of, they do not. Okay, we have Skarsgård, right? Mm. He's this mysterious person, right? We don't know exactly where. I, I kind of figure where it's going. But you're like, oh, that's Pennywise. And then you have Sissy Spake. Oh, that's Carrie. You oh, know, I and you're, they're, they're kind of doing these little nods to you, and you have, like, Jackie Torrance. You don't have Jack Torrance from The Shining, which is a, a yeah. Nicholson's uh, character. I so I don't really understand, and you have you have a lot of Easter eggs for Stephen King. All right, so but I feel like I, so a little not, reliant all right, on so it. So what I got out of all this, I'm not watching this show. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's no Ozark. All right, let's. Let, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, you, you missed, you missed yeah. the, you missed yeah. the boat, but you guys yes. will be talking We're about it right after this, and it'll be on. I am so excited. Yes, and if you're a fan of Ozark, you're gonna you can hear both Roxy and Josh McCuga talking yeah. about Ozark on the TV Talk feed. If yeah. you subscribe to the TV Talk feed. It'll also be on the podcast YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to that, you should do that. Subscribe to all of our channels here that we have, or whether it's sports or video games, the podcast channel. Uh, make sure you do that. And, and it's all over the, the iTunes, uh, the Apple Podcasts as well, and Podcast One app. Um, but we're going to shift over to where's, where's Janish? Mm. Where's Hello. Janish? He's coming in right now. All right, so Riley, can I have him just yep. sit there with you Absolutely. for a second? Um, Where did we get this JTE cut yeah. out? The producers didn't yell That's at Clark. That's actually JTE. JTE. Producers oh. didn't give Clark the note, so, I, so I'm not going to yell it on air, but we... Boosh. No phones. No phones. They didn't give that to you. That was that was that. That's not on you. That's on. That's I'm going to blame Riley on it. Um, so let's. So I want to sit down now. Now joining us is both uh, Josh McCuga. What's up? And the stats man, Frankie Numbers himself, Frank Janish. What's yes, up, Frank? Hello. How you Frankie doing, man? Numbies. Yeah, Frankie Numbers. Frankie Numbers. How you doing? Yeah. Um, and Roxy wanted. She asked before how we got you involved in here, and Aaron Turner was the guy who brought you in, and yeah. you've been doing the show for like two years. Yeah. You're also you've been to all three live events. Yeah, all three. All three. Yeah. So Frank like, flies out from Chicago just to come see, see the events. It's yeah. it's really cool. But I wanted to just what? the thing I wanted to talk about with this event was. Um, I've talked about it a lot to where, you know, and I heard you guys on the rundown, they brought it up in the beginning, was that I had tweeted out earlier this week that it's probably going to be the last live one for a little bit. And it wasn't a matter of like, well, they don't do well. The last two have sold out. Mm -hmm. um, the w the reaction was amazing. It's, I don't want to keep doing them in, L in L.A. right now. I want to give... I want to give other fans opportunities to do it, but what I'm trying to tell people, like I did a poll, I don't know if you saw it over the weekend. Yeah, I did. I voted for New York. New, New York. York. Well, New York. New York. What were the options? Well, so on Twitter, you only get like four options, right? Yeah. So I think it was New York, Chicago, Houston, Houston, and um, there was in Arizona, Arizona. Because, I, because of the fan base that we have in Arizona. Yeah. And we there have was a like, massive fan base in Arizona. Yeah, and like so five, everybody we meet is from, from Arizona. Arizona. So it was like 5,000 oh, people. people drove in from Arizona, totally. actually. Yeah. 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 And we have a couple competitors late to the party, Chance Ellison, yeah. uh, Tim Franco, they're all from from uh, Arizona. But anyway, so five thousand people voted on Twitter. Five thousand people, Damn. and like, um, and I think, and fifty percent had New York. So I mean, like twenty five hundred people would say they would buy a ticket if we <laughs> if we went to New York, right? And then I look over at the Facebook group, and it says something like uh, three hundred or three hundred fifty people voted for New York over there. Mm -hmm. 
So as I'm looking at it, I'm like, look, I'd, New York would be the place I'd want to go. But you need a budget to do it. You know, yeah. you need a budget. Especially you gotta, in New York. But that's yeah, the thing. Oh, yeah. people, don't, people don't realize. Like, So let's say it's Clark Wolf um, you know, versus Andrew Guy in the main event in New York. I got to fly Clark Wolf out. I got to pay Clark Wolf. I got to pay Andrew hotel. Guy. I got to do a hotel. I got to um, get the crew out. I got to get the camera equipment out. I have to book another, uh, uh, you know, a peop- uh, an undercard. I have to do. There's so much that goes into it. Then the someone venue. said the venue, obviously. But then someone said um, they realized that at first because I told him how much I need for the Schmodown to work in general. Mm-hmm. You need the, the Shimoda to really work at a full capacity. It needs about 100 grand a month if yeah. you want to do it the right way. And if you look at this, in the grand scheme, a company wor- running at like 1.4 million, it's peanuts when mm-hmm. you look at it. But when you think about it, someone said to me, they go, they were like, some guy is like, you know, I, lo- I just inquired about the New York Post running an advertisement in the Post and just to see how much that would cost for one, for one, one spread, 10 grand. Yeah. Like that. It goes, people don't realize what the marketing and these things go into it. It, go, it that's what that's what it does. And I want to build this thing. I sure. want to do that. But what Saturday night meant to me was that we could do this. And I know and you you texted me yesterday and it was a really nice text, it was a meaningful text. And I know that you you're always honest with me too. Mm-hmm. And the thing is when Makuga, if if it would have been a shitty show, hey, do you think we should have done this, 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 and then but you didn't feel that. You felt it, no. it went up with a hitch. What was your experience like? Yeah, no, um, because after the the last one, um, I thought that you know there were so many competitors there that were all just kind of hanging out, and then we got we kind of got rushed at the end. And we weren't allowed to like go out and say hey to people or whatever. Uh, the only person that never listens to that is William Viviani, who goes out and like does his own right. little fucking pre-show. You tell him, uh, man. But I thought that you know, and I reached out to you. I said, why don't we have the Wild Berries do some crowd warm up first? We do. We hand out some Patreon stuff. We get you know everybody kind of involved because. It is a raucous environment. Those people came far and wide to see us for whatever stupid reason. And Across the country, people flew from Connecticut. Mon- the guy that this guy Quinn, who I we interviewed during the crowd warm up, he came, drove in from Montana, right? Uh, and he was like, oh, "I'm driving home tonight after the show." I was like, "What to Montana?" Awesome dude. It was a really really fun time. The crowd had a blast. I thought the matches were super fun. Uh, the the inner geekdom was a heavyweight battle. I yeah, mean, don't, that don't, was, no spoilers. No spoilers. I'm not, not going to say no, anything. No, but it really was. Yeah. It was really battle. impressive. The the tag team uh, super entertaining, and I thought, and in, not only that, but what what people don't realize about going into a live show is tightness. And I thought the production crew, the tightness of the show uh, from from 6:40 to 9:05, because we wanted it from seven to nine. Right. Show was on. Yeah, Cobster, Thad, uh, Cody, the whole Adam Smith. They everybody. got in a little earlier and they worked those, without those it guys. Show, shine ass. working, yeah. And you and Mark, you. I mean, because we've been doing this for so long, you know your marks, you know your time to hit it. The, the competitors know what they're doing. The fans right. know what's going on. It is a well-oiled machine. I think after the first one, had we said, "Are we ready for a thing?" I'd be, like, ah, we're, "We're close." Right. Second one, we're getting there. After last night, if we got a budget to take this on the road, we we could go into cities like gangbusters, like old uh, tonics salesman like we got the stuff right. are you kids gonna buy it and well, that's the thing out. and i realized there's two com- there's two types of competitors there's competitors that thrive in the live environment there's mm-hmm. others who want, would rather do it in the studio i feel like if we were able to do this live in front of the crowds all the time that you would want to, if when when you were competing you would rather do live than in the studio am i right or wrong I don't know if it's a rather situation, okay. but <laughs> I'm I'm certainly comfortable doing it yeah, I live. Yeah, I thought you just came. You just look in your element in yeah. the second show. Yeah, but I think too, like we've talked. Emma Fife and I talk about this a lot. Like Emma and I have theater backgrounds, right. and Draco has a theater background. A lot of people here, stand up background. Yeah, yeah stand yeah. up exactly. Yeah. Like so many, yeah, yeah, so many of us have Andrew guy. Yeah, yeah. right. Theater oh, background. Yeah. We have like stage background experience, and so we're 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 comfortable in a live environment where anything goes. That said, there is pressure for sure, mm-hmm. and uh, added pressure, different pressure, and. Um, and you know, like technical things that are not anyone's fault, but like I had a hard time hearing. Yeah, which is what we improved on Good. Yes. this time. Good. Yeah, because yes. I could, because of that, match. it was so hard yeah. to hear that it cost us repeats and yep. time and shenanigans. But I would love to play. Li- I mean, I like playing live for sure. Would you? How would you feel? Because Sam had when Sam was champion. Sam right. had a concern about playing for the belts live. Um, would how would you feel about a title match live? I agree with all of Sam's concerns. What was about, his concern? Um. Well. 
you know, like if you challenge something or if we have to, for whatever reason, throw out a question or whatever, like when you're in a live environment, there is a pressure to keep the show going. But also get it right. But all Exactly. And that's the thing is like it, for me on the technical side as a player in the studio, we can stop take a minute, address whatever the concern is, and not feel rushed or pressured or whatever. Um, and and I just, for me, if you're playing for a belt, yeah. I would not want the added concern of of giving the people a great lot. Exactly. You That's just want exactly. to play the game. I did, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, but I think you can see, you'd still be able to do that, though, too. I, I, I mean, I guess just because of who you are, you'd mm-hmm. want to do both. The pressure would be there. But I think, I think it's they also... love the behind the scenes look, though. I wouldn't worry about that. I think people, if you pause and you're contesting things, yeah. like, because I watch these shows live all the time here. The crowd well, would get awesome. But here, this is yeah. the thing, though, is that, like, for me, um, I don't want the crowd going, no, if I'm saying yes. Right. Yeah. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, it's yeah. like, no. Let me make my decision. Let, I'm cool. That's exactly right. right. Like, let's now not you know how have. athletes feel. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. I'm serious. Like, if but that's I, not what you signed up for necessarily. Right. If I had a say, I don't want the crowd to so, weigh in. Well, let me get Frank's take on this. Because, Frank, you, you take it from, the, again, an analyst. Um, and you're watching. And you, but you talked to a lot of fans when you were there, too. What, yeah. was, the, what was the energy like in the room? Um, what did you take away from the experience in general, and how do you feel about live as opposed to, because you, you're here for the studio all the yeah. time, too. Uh, the fans are very, very invested. Uh, they know exactly what they're talking about. They can do what I do easily. Hmm. Um, Don't say that. That's when your job <laughs> is taken. Yeah, right. yeah, never true. say that out loud. Well, yeah, I guess it's true. Um, you know, a lot of people drove in from all over the place. Uh, Jersey, uh, my, or Michigan, Montana, right. um, Phoenix, a lot from Phoenix, uh, other parts of California. We're huge in Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, we are. I'm telling it's you. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think the the excitement was uh, people have been, come back from the first or the yeah, second. Yeah, we've got a lot of repeat lot people coming in. Right, right. Uh, I talked to another guy, uh, Jeremy Adams. He he was at the second event. He's from Orange County, I think. Okay, yeah. Right, I think so. Um, Maybe not. No. I remember, yeah. yeah. I remember. Well, that was um, the point. Is well, trying you either to talk just to made him feel really special or really forgotten. So <laughs> right. I think it was a risky. Yeah, well, he's done true. some other fan <laughs> stuff for like, the slowdown and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was at the second event, and when you announced the tickets for the third one, he bought them right away. There was people like that. Yeah. So uh, people love the live event. I think they view it as their sport. A lot of uh, movie fans don't necessarily are into sports per se, but this is their sport, and they will come out and, uh, and root and cheer. and. Yeah. Just like a football game, baseball game, all that. Yeah, it's it, this is totally off this, just a touch. But I, when you told me that Leonard Maltin was there, yeah, and then you showed me the tweet. What did he tweet? He tweeted well, that he had he had an amazing time. Amazing he was time. so excited. We we call it basically we did what. I wanted to do what they did in boxing matches, right? Like so, right before the main event, I said, "Today in the crowd, we have the half of the team champions. Rachel Cushing is here. Emma Fife is here. Andrew Guy, Sam Levine, and joining us today, one of the best of all time, Leonard Maltin." And the people got gave him a standing ovation. Yeah, and they went nuts. It was really yeah, it was great. Sweet. It was um, like four hundred people for for a guy like a, a kid who watched him on TV all growing up, uh, like you know, just a kid in Pittsburgh. To the fact that that guy knows my name, yeah, it, like. It's it was a meta like out of body experience. Crazy. Yeah, and, really and cool. that that was what I liked so much about it. So I like I went through a range of emotions this past week with the show. I believe we can do so much with it. Um, and there's just um, I just yeah I just want to see what we're able to accomplish. I want to see how it does. We released the team match on Tuesday. The mm-hmm. Inner Geekdom Championship match goes up on Friday. So make sure that you check that out. And obviously we have our the Patreon, which is something we're trying to get going here too. So there check was that a out moment too. in the team match. Yeah, don't, don't, don't I'm not going to give anything, yeah. but I'm backstage and asking the question. Everybody's looking at me like, did, did you? Oh, right. Did, no, yeah, did yeah, 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 right, right, right. So anyway, so I just wanted to thank, you know, everybody here who, who had gone to the show or, or was planning on watching. I'd like to thank the competitors who, who make the show as special as, as, um, as they do. And we got a lot of great things to, to do and make sure I want you guys to check out. So Janish is on Rundowns on every Friday. Uh, it comes out Saturday. It comes out Saturday. Like you reco- you recorded on, on Friday. Friday yeah. Right. And Brad Gilmore. We also actually, I did a bunch of interviews in the green room. Oh, right. And, and I actually, we put that up uh, today because it all took place before the match. So oh, great. Are you from Chicago? The- 
<laughs> he is. Yeah. Yeah. Can, you, Can tell? you tell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago was the second option. That's so right. It was yeah. New York and Chicago. Those I love those cities. Yeah. Yeah, we well, to was, wouldn't that. Phoenix cut your costs in half because you drive? Um, uh, yeah, but I mean, if Phoenix didn't, Arizona didn't vote as much. Yeah. Uh, it was New York and Chicago were the two kind that voted Facebook, the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it got wiped out on the Twitter one, but it was mostly New York. Anything? Can I come? Yeah, of course you can. Anything? You know what we could do? I mean, yeah. this is a crazy idea, but... Chartering a private jet with everything is not as expensive as you think. I swear. I don't know, look into My buddies it. did it for the Super Bowl, and it cost them way less than you think. And you can also check out. So Frank Janish also does the stats on every match. Um, he, he's the rain man of, uh, of Movie Trivia Schmodown. Yeah. And you can check out his bit at, after every single match. Check him out on the Schmodown Rundown on the Collider Factory feed every Saturday. Um, Frank, you can hang out for a little bit too. We're gonna, we're, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love Frank. He's one of the best. But I took over for his. Yeah, the, the best is when you came up to me. You're like, you're like, you know. <sighs> <laughs> when you, it's not. It's not. So, when you were doing your fantasy, yeah, it's like it's not so much that I don't like the bits. Is it just don't really accomplish anything? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I'm when not, is, like, totally when are you guys so, talking about? So Josh, Josh used to do a very popular bit with Cody after every and match. And sometimes Cobbs. And it was the yeah right. It was the fantasy bit. And so the team, you know, so pl- fans have fantasy teams that they play mm-hmm. every year. Right. And so f- they would do the fantasy updates, and it would be this ridiculous, funny sketches. But the point of this the, the <laughs> bit was supposed to be let fans know when to pick up who, that yeah. someone's having a bad game, you should probably do this. And they never did that. No. And it was always just like creative, I fun just things. just yelled about that competitors. Pe- that pe- yeah, yeah. And, it was, and it wasn't even, it made no sense. And no. I said, I like it, I laugh at it, but it does nothing. Yeah. And then Frank, who like breaks down all these stats, like you can get full on stats and know what everybody's doing and the yeah. players. It's helped the players more than anything else. Players yes. know their stats. Yeah, like no. Do you remember Stump the Schwab? Do you remember that show on ESPN? Yeah. Like, that's that's Frank right. Janish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. So Frank Janish, thank you. And I also wanted to so Clark has done. Uh, I guess you're gonna pitch. You're gonna try to pitch me on some on some movies. That's what it says here. It says uh, pitching the next nostalgia horror movie. I mean, you you know how I feel about. Begging you to watch great things. This <laughs> is this, this is, this is, this is, a, this is the next thing nostalgia thing horror. What are these oh great mind. things you speak of? <laughs> yeah. so, and Aaron Turner wants me to watch it. All right, well, all right. <laughs> Pitching the next nostalgia <laughs> horror movie. Wait, Riley, does that mean like because Halloween is yeah. like what should be the next Halloween? So if we are assuming that Halloween is getting good reviews, right, and it's gonna kind of bring back the slasher movie, what yeah. other? Nostalgia-based horror movies. Could yeah. we start with? Could we see coming next? Because Blumhouse yeah. just actually, Jason Blum just actually said he's interested in in Scream, and I know what you did last summer, but the rights. Right. So because because ha- right. because Halloween, I'm on board. So that's why that's why this can can work. And I will say, I make an announcement for tomorrow. So tomorrow, Beardo is going to mic up Makuga, mm-hmm. and I'm going to walk over to the movie theater with Makuga, and he and I are going to go see The Nun. And you might hear something like, uh, like, like, like this, right, Peter? We, we, we might hear what? <laughs> <laughs> Very possible. Why, why do you agree to this stuff? We, well, I'm, I'm a. <laughs> oh my I'm God! A, wait a minute. I'm a sucker VR. for content. I'm a sucker. I listen. I'm a, I, I know that I'm a glutton for punishment because cops are on Thursdays. Like, you know, you could just say no. I was like, I know, but people want to do this and yeah. yada yada yada. People seem to laugh at it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for punishment, but I also I like, you like the content. Bit. What I time like are you guys bit. going? We're, I don't know, right after the show. So if you want to come with yeah, us, yeah, I again. think so. So the other thing though too. <laughs> so Makuga, Makuga just did the, the the VR for the um, what was it? The for the Exorcist. Yes. that was the best. I mean, we that just did chapter so one. I yeah. didn't make it to the. I, I don't want to spoil it. anything. You did it. I make yeah, it? You made it. Oh, yeah. okay. Stop that! I've never. Put the I, music. I can't with that. That was the best. I almost. That cried was at the, the end. best one. Yeah. By it was far. pretty intense. Yeah. By right. That was terrifying. All right, so we're gonna go tomorrow. I'm gonna. I'm gonna mic you up. We're gonna go see okay. the nun together, okay. and we'll get some more sound bites of your. Yes. That's Halloween. Can Is we do? Halloween? Can we do yeah. it with Halloween? And I and I want to go with it. I think it's a little sexy sounding. Yeah. All right. So let's Halloween. So greatest horror theme of Halloween. All time. So Clark, yeah. let's let's go, Clark. What do we got? Okay. Well, to your point, to what Blum said about Scream, and I know what you did last summer. Mm. I I hear two between the lines things there. Yeah. The first thing I hear is Scream and Ryan Turk. 
Yeah. Turek is my former Bloodcast co-host, but also like the director yeah, of that development. That name. Yeah. yeah, and he he was personally shouted out at TIFF by Jason talking oh, cool. about shepherding Halloween because Halloween is like Ryan. Well, it's interesting because actually Friday the Thirteenth, I always felt like Ryan was a, a Jason guy. But either way, this has been a like Ryan's baby essentially, is, and mm-hmm. and I know he was feeling the pressure of like don't fuck this up, right? right? Wait, so um, what's he working on then, Ryan? Was Ryan, Ryan working on Halloween? Yeah, yeah. He, oh, sure. he, he basically yeah. shepherded oh, wow. Halloween from start to finish. Didn't know that. I'm yeah. really glad you asked that question because I felt yeah. like the only moron in the room. No, no, I like Ryan. Good clarification. Uh, Ryan's, yeah. Ryan's a fantastic dude, so I'm yeah, glad. He's I'm been glad. at Blumhouse for like five, for three years. It. What did you do Makes with JTE? Yeah, uh, I'm moving he on. Disappeared. He disappeared. The, the chat. I mean, all so, they're doing is seeing me sit, stand next to him. So everybody, shut up. Now I'm sitting. So oh. Scream. <laughs> I, I I hear Ryan in there because Ryan did a documentary about Scream and like all this stuff. I know what you did last summer. Mike Flanagan, who did Oculus, yeah. he was doing a ton of Netflix content. Gerald's Game, House on Haunted Hill. He's doing the new Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Oh, that's right. Can't wait. Um, Mike Flanagan co-wrote an adaptation of I Know What You Did Last Summer like two years ago. Mm. And basically there has been no movement about it. No, So so knowing Blum's history and relationship with Flanagan, and he's so hot right now, that that's what that says to me. Yeah. Um, Texas Chainsaw is making its money. It's doing Texas Chainsaw. The the movies that they are putting out are making money. Yeah, they're just garbage. Yeah. They're just they they're just, just so awful. Yeah. Did you see the Sarah Silverman face just then? Did you yeah, see it? kind of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so for me, I, I, you know, the next logical step for Blumhouse is Friday the 13th. They already have a relationship with Platinum Dunes. That's with, where I'm going. Yeah. It, you know it, me. It makes sense. And and that's also a Turek specialty. But the one I want to see is uh, Hellraiser. Oh. We have not done enough with the Hellraiser Pinhead. franchise. Yeah. Did you guys play crickets? Or am I just hearing? <laughs> I thought they were like... Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah right. but yeah, Hell, Hellraiser would be the one that no, I want. No, meaning that that no one, that wanna, no one wants yeah, yeah. it. Are you yeah. talking like reboot, continuation, well, like a similar, side story? Yeah, side what, story. Yeah. What I think is attractive about you know Halloween is that they're just what I always want. When I, when I heard they were going to do this for Alien, I loved it. There's some other movie where they were just going to say or Terminator, right? Let's Terminator. forget about some of these other shitty sequels and all that stuff. This is going to take place after this because that, that just seems to be like a new thing that they've been doing, and I love it. And Halloween's doing it. This is just a direct sequel to the original. Fantastic. Good. You can do that. I still want to see them do that with, with Aliens. I think right after Aliens is what happened. Well, Michael Bean is still alive. Well, Cam's doing that now with Robocop. He's and it's, doing, and and it's, it's a direct take sequel? Place right after Robocop. Wait, so wait, so who's so who's playing? Well, Cam is going to direct. I don't no, know. I, know, I don't know who's going to so, do Murphy. So, Okay, but it's supposed to be it's supposed to be the same the same Murphy like yep. right after that we saw from yep. the, okay well that's yeah. cool I, I that's what I'm and Blumkamp was the one who's supposed to do that for aliens he was so supposed to do it with aliens I'm yeah. digging that so I like that so as long as your if your ideas kind of do something along those lines I that's what I that's what I like I want them to do that or at least look like and feel like the movies that I knew. I mean, and on. Riley and I talked about this with Friday the 13th on Nightmares all the time. It's yeah. like guys of all of yeah. the franchises, it's the easiest. It's I don't understand why people, why this, why Platinum Dunes has yeah. greenlit and canceled two movies, three to yeah, yeah three. Was it Michael Bay? Michael Bay is like, that's Platinum yeah, that's Dunes. That's what I'm saying. They so own. Like, they, that's, that's, why do you say it's the easiest? That's your answer. Fine. Because the remake was fine. It's as simple. It's, the mythology and the story, and also what fans expect from a Friday the Thirteenth movie is truly slasher at its core. Like oh, yeah. Michael Myers uh, or Halloween, you expect a Jamie Lee Curtis component and you expect Michael Myers. With Nightmare on Elm Street, there is mythology involved, like with Freddy Krueger and like the dream sequences and all of that. Friday the 13th is literally a guy in the woods killing teenagers. It's that simple. So It's a, it's a, it's a campfire story. It, exactly. So I don't understand this. Like, it's not that complicated. The, the, they tried to make a, a movie, the, the Guzikowski script, who uh, wrote Prisoners. Right. And it was three killers. Movie. It was Jason, his dad, and his mom. Mm. And it was, I, he wrote Family a phenomenal Yeah, exactly. It was the worst thing I've ever read, and they are almost going to production with this. 
and I couldn't yeah. believe uh, it. You guys know how I smoke a lot of weed, and so sometimes <laughs> I have these like little stoner yeah. moments. Yeah. Do you guys Just remember? Uh, yeah, kind of. Do you guys remember House of Wax? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, the, the remake. I was. That I was the first House movie I was working on when I was. When I was no there, way. When I was at Silver Pictures, Shut it was the, the first movie. I love Shut the yeah. Front Door. I, I think it's I didn't fun. Mind it. Yeah, me too. I, well, the, same, it's weird. Same it's writers. So weird. Same writers of Conjuring. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was working on that. I, I was. It was the movie they were working on when I started working there. So they had already got, done everything too. I was just. I had to do a lot of the post stuff when I got there too. But it was one of the. And it was the first premiere that I went to when wow. I was there. So um, yeah, it was. It, I had fun with the movie. I thought it was fine. And Paris Hilton, they were making the. Did big, she sing? Oh, she was no. in that. No. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you remember? And her little finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she. You know, and we, everybody we, cheered in the theater when she died. Though. Yeah. yeah. Same. Same in mine. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. You know, we like we glazed over it, but I went on a date in high school. I guess when I like eighth grade, seventh grade. When did we, I know what That's you did last school. summer? Middle school, whatever. Uh, on a, with this girl to see. I know what you did last summer because she what? like wanted to see a horror movie. Obviously, and I've only been on dates twice to a horror movie, and I've never talked to those girls again. Really, um, they but never talked to you. Again. I actually, I <laughs> liked, I love that cast. That that uh, you know, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Ryan. So Philippe, nice. Did you scream Prince. in the theater? I was in the eighth grade. Of course I did. Okay. Dude, I mean, you know my story of going on that first date to see uh, uh, Strangers, the Liv Tyler movie. With the, oh, I love such her. A good I was on a first date with a girl that never that. talked to me again. Oh, because of this? That's she strangers. went. Oh, tell me. I don't think I know Wait, What scary. age are we talking? Uh, 27? Oh, probably? tell me this story because I don't know this story. So uh, I, I, was, I go on this date with this girl, and I had been trying to like get her to go on a date with me for a while. And she she finally said, yeah, well, let's go to see this movie, The Strangers. It's Liv Tyler. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You, see, you knew nothing about knew it. knew nothing about the movie. Didn't even look into it. Thought it was Got, romantic comedy or something? I thought, yeah, like uh, two okay. strangers meeting in an right, alley. Right, 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 right. Our you. life together. Yeah. Dope. Whoops. We get we 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 start watching the movie and they're like fighting and whatever and and then I was like this doesn't seem like a rom com <laughs> going the wrong way I didn't see this very, coming very far from and then all of a sudden it turns into the scariest it's movie a of movie. all time yeah. and there's a point where no you gotta do it you gotta keep them up no, you ruin you ruin the bit well, you know, keep them up that's, that's part scary. of it that's you, not you even gotta, you gotta power through that's it. not the strength you gotta so, power through it so there's one point where. She opens like the curtains behind the sink and the sink window, and that face is just standing there. Yeah. And I was just like, ah, ah! I screamed, and she that, that she good. looked at me <laughs> and like gauged me up and down. And then we're in the car ride home, and I was like, "Do you have fun?" She's like, "Yeah." Oh and shit! I was, and, I, and she's like, "Why did you scream like that so many times?" <laughs> Did and you I was like, your mind? Uh, well, I get really scary at scary <laughs> movies, and she said, "Yeah, I could tell." Didn't, then, work, didn't go over well. And then I said, you know, do you want to go out for a drink? She's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. So that people was that. Think, people don't understand that yeah. it's like legit Sent a text real. the next day, never yeah. had another text back, never talked yeah. to that But anyway, girl. you were going, you, you were saying. I like, I know, I know what you did last summer. I wouldn't mind seeing it really yeah. good. I really li I like that idea I for a movie. I love that movie, though. Right. Yeah. I, I, sometimes when you love something, you just don't want them to touch it. I mean, the it. three greatest actors of the 90s, in my opinion, are Freddie Prince Jr., Ryan Felipe, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Nice. Yeah. And that, like, they are, whenever they were in a movie, I went and saw it. Are you a it. Cruel Intentions fan? <laughs> yeah. yeah I like Even more movie. so, Summer Catch. Yeah. Summer Catch. I That's always right. love when Clark is, is taking the high road. She says nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know her so classy, well now. Classy, classy, classy as always. Classy, yeah, always. Well, speaking of the classy one, it was in a her head she's going, he's an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you on the Thank show. Thank you tonight. for having me. I had a lot of fun talking to you. Um, and we'll see you're going to be back in, I think, sooner than later. Well, no, shit, we have the the Anarchy tournament that's starting, and then the winner of that tournament plays you guys for the championship on uh, at the Schmodown Spectacular. Mm -hmm. Those teams, you, anybody in particular that you want to see? Nope. No, you don't care. Whoever it is, bring them. Uh. I mean, I would love to see Josh McCuga and his partner. Yeah, Dewberry? The, the Wild, wild Berries. The, well, why do you know guys... it's not teams? It's, it's like no, not. Oh, he, Wild Berries is the, the only, only team that, that stayed. That, that stayed. Oh, <laughs> I don't get it. Then, yeah. yes, I would like to see it. Listen, you can't break up perfection. Once perfection has started, it stays the course. That's it. It's true. My, and my team is boss. Yeah, they are. She got in. She's managing so. Andrako and Snyder, which is going to uh, be an interesting oh, team. Yeah, wow. that, so, that's going to be really that's interesting. Tough, which would be very cool if uh, maybe you, you know, you and uh, and your stable mate and Draco go head to head at the spectacular. So there's a lot of things that can happen. Frank Janis, thank you for being on the show. Check thank out, you. check out again over at the Schmodown Rundown. Airing on Saturdays. Josh McCuga, TV Talk, Mark Riley, everything. Collider and the Riley Roundtable on the 
Harloff podcast, uh, no, excuse me, on Harloff 101, yeah. on uh, the was it Apple podcast, and you also got the rule of two. Real quick, yeah. super, super quick. Did yeah. you see Ryan and I pitched Bad Boys 3, and did you see Will Smith blew up social media with the Bad Boys 3 thing this weekend? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't yeah. see yeah. it. Okay, Jeff, sure. when we pit, it, he has a great Bad Boys 3. We did it on Riley Roundtable. All right, let's talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Let's talk about it kind of, and again, on Collider Life tomorrow, I'm going to mic up uh, Makuga, and I will actually... I, Definitely have a drink with him afterwards or even some food. I won't make him go home. Uh, Don't forget if he Roxy. Screams. I'm the only one I know. Can say I was about to, to say, let the me music finish is the playing, let me know. finish the outro. And you know, you play the music. <laughs> and okay, she's making friends all around the world, all the and place. especially here. She's Roxy Stryer, and tomorrow she will be back to come with us, and we're gonna walk her through more of this stuff to stop being so down on her damn self. Aww. Check her out. I love her. You guys love her, and we love you. Collider Live. Peace out, Mother Us. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>